almost 200 years old. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to the November 4th meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand for the salute for the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 I'd like to make a couple of comments. It's my plan, if nobody objects, to um, change the order of a couple of things in the interest of getting a couple of people out of here sooner rather than later. So that my plan is to move. It says Chris uh, Chief Silver on the agenda. It's actually the deputy. Um, is to move him ahead of Keith Noise, and that I anticipate his meeting, his appointment being a quick one, and didn't see a need to hold him up. The other thing is under old business, we've got an item, Chris <coughs> Mill, Mill Pond Dam funding warrant article, I yeah. think. Keith needs to be here for that, and I don't see any need for him to wait to that point in the meeting, yep. so I'm going to slide that one up to the end of Keith's appointment. Excellent. So, at any rate, I'd um, like to start off with the uh, public comment period. Would anybody from the public wish to comment? Arthur? No? <laughs> Art. <clears throat> Art Moody, <clears throat> Three Thompson Road. Uh, I'd like to mention the fact that uh, I was surprised that the, uh, the leaf collection was cut in half in the first set of four, four weeks in November, the first and third week. And it, it's more than half because the, uh, you're not doing Friday trash and recycling pickup unless it's on a, one of the holidays we don't pick up. Everything gets moved to Friday. so. I, I didn't hear any public comment on that, and I know the budget for collection, EPW uh, trash recycling leaf collection was increased eight and a half percent from last year's appropriation, and uh, I just uh, don't have a truck and I don't have a utility trailer, <laughs> so I rely on that good, very good service, people like me. And uh, thought I'd make that comment. The other comment <coughs> concerned last week's public comment period. <coughs> uh, there were only two of us. The other person's five minutes uh, was replied to by the chairman, Chairman Nichols, and she was able to comment after the interaction. However, my comments. I was not at the podium anymore, so I couldn't say anything when uh, the chairman uh, asked the manager a couple of questions about what I had said, uh, whether the fire chief has the authority to do fire lanes, and the manager said something about the state fire code, and uh, also the cost of that general code book that I was referring to that I estimate cost about 100000 including staff, time in the town office, and research by the New York company, plus the printing. And uh, my concerns on the fire lane was the fact that they were on public town roads in which the selectmen have police powers to put ordinances for towing and ticketing, but not in that, that uh, ticketing and towing, I should say. Uh, and I would mention 17th, 18th, and 19th Street, public town roads. And when we adopted the state fire code in 2003 and clarified it in 2009, uh, it was all for the construction of buildings, renovations of buildings, demolition of buildings. It said nothing about public roads. And so, therefore, no one knew that somehow there's some authority in there, which I can't find. <coughs> I even looked in the RSA's long index of 20 volumes of laws, and there's, alphabetically, there's no entry that says state fire code. However, all the ones that I know that have been made in this town are under the town meeting vote in 1985, in which we adopted by reference this Fire, National Fire Protection 
uh, ordinance, which the state allowed at the time. And when they didn't allow it anymore, uh, we did the state fire code. We rescinded that 1985 vote 10 years ago. So that authority doesn't exist. And I'm, I don't know if it's still being used, but the last one I saw used that rescinded ordinance. My concern was the fact that police in that code book see that fire lanes are listed among the selectmen's police powers with towing and <coughs> fines, certain fines. And I said it's a building inspector that enforces building codes, not the police. It's a civil matter. And the police are on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Building inspectors on 40 hours a week. His office is open about 40 hours a week. And therefore, the selectmen's ordinances should be on town roads, not uh, your sapacious uh, fire officer pronouncement. The other thing on the, uh, the the manager asked answered the question by saying state fire code. The other question in that uh, double standard uh, situation last week uh, was on the cost of the code book, and the chairman asked him, "Didn't you tell us that it cost twenty thousand for that book?" And he said, "Close, closer." which meant 20000 is closer than 100000 <laughs> which means it could cost at least 59000 if, if you talk about the staff time. I still stand by about $50,000, $100,000 for the cost of that because the $20,000 was probably just for the printer. And I'm sure that further questioning would bring that out. Well, that's, that's my nickel's worth. Thank you, Arthur. Anybody else from the public? Seeing none. First appointment. Uh, can I make down? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mike? Yeah, I do have one. That's oh, why I mentioned it. Uh, the Hampton Arts <laughs> Network, November, <laughs> August of the month, is Celia O at the Town Hall display. Celia migrated to America in 1980 with her parents and attended the Fashion Institute um, Technology in New York. She now lives in Hampton with her husband where they have a small business. Celia paints with watercolor and mainly does landscapes inspired by the seacoast area. Open for viewing through December 6th. So you get in here before December 6th to see all of her beautiful paintings. And uh, during regular business hours at Town Hall, obviously at 100 when it kind of wrote. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Sure. Slepman Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if uh, 22 can boot up uh, the Marines' 238th birthday <laughs> party announcement. Uh, we routinely hold that at the uh, galley hatch. There it is right now uh, under the uh, former Sergeant Harry Babolas out of the uh, mountains of Greece to the general manager of the finest, uh, one of the finest restaurants uh, in the town and in the state that uh, is per the uh, invitation for U.S. Marines and invited guests. If you served with the Marines, if your family member was in the Marines, uh, if you uh, want to come and experience a party with the United States Marine Corps, it is one of the best. It's produced by uh, Commander Ralph Fatello uh, of the uh, Post 35 in town. We all know the sterling and scintillating work he does. It is our 238th birthday. Uh, there will be bagpipes, the Marine Prayer, the Commandant's message, General Lejeune's message, the Rifleman's Creed, and of course the uh, cake cutting ceremony. Uh, the SOS is a uh, perennial <laughs> hit, dinner by reservation, and a cash bar. So thank you very much for that, uh, Channel 22. Uh, and then an email came in late this afternoon. I don't know if uh, um, the board saw it. And, and I'm shocked because it's about Dottie Crowley, and she's a local. Yes. And she, she's no longer yeah, with yeah. us. Yeah. And uh, if, if I may just read that, uh, Mr. Chairman. So we, the neighbors of Place Cove community, would like to request uh, your approval to place a memorial plaque on one of the existing undedicated benches at Northside Park. This, of course, is down at Place Cove. 
plaque would be to remember and honor one of our beloved neighbors, Dottie Crowley, who recently passed away. Dottie raised her four children in Hampton and was employed locally for many years as a bank teller. Upon her retirement, she became a volunteer at the Exeter Hospital, and her, in her involvement in this community has touched many. Dottie spent the last 45 years living in and loving this neighborhood. She spent many hours after her retirement sitting on, quote, her bench, always with her beloved, beloved dog, Katie, enjoying the views and talking with anyone who passed by. Her friendship and eagerness to always help in any situation, to share a laugh or give a sympathetic ear, made her a treasure to everyone she met. She will be missed. Our intent is to organize a collection fund and install a plaque in accordance with the town specifications. We hope you will consider and approve our request. And I know that the board sends out the condolences to the family and to the myriad neighbors that uh, co-signed this email down at that uh, lovely section of the world. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mike? All set. Mary Louise? Does the invitation to the Marine celebration uh, extend <laughs> to Navy families? Because without the Navy, the Marines wouldn't go anywhere. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll pass on the SOS, though. <laughs> Speaking as a Navy family, uh, very quickly, uh, I actually am now getting the automatic notices for the winter parking ban on November 15th. Everybody, don't anybody forget that. Leaf collection the week of November 4th and the week of November 18th on your regular pickup day. Put your leaves out in front in neat bags and they, they'll be picked up. And we have been inundated with um, comments on those mean selectmen taking away road races. We haven't. Uh, we were just discussing potential problems, and we will be consulting with Chief Sullivan, I promise, in the future on a case-by-case -case basis. To all of the runners out there, congratulations. I'm glad you're in good shape, and we'll be doing some case-by-case -case thinking there. Um, just a clarification, Mary Louise. I believe the um, winter parking ban prevents on-street parking between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m.? That's correct. I'm doing that from memory, whatever. And what we've also done in recent years is, is cleared the snow at some of the um, beach parking lots, mm -hmm. for example, the, the Ashworth. Um, do you know what, what the plan is in terms of that this year, or maybe if you don't, an update next We're week. going to continue to do that, Mr. Chairman, and, and offer that parking to anybody who doesn't have a place to park mm -hmm. so they can get their cars off mm -hmm. the street. And, and what lots uh, was that? We've been doing the Ashworth, and we've been doing the um, uh, Island Path. Okay. Uh -huh. Good. Okay. Um, also, there is an opening on the Energy Committee. Um, anyone interested, uh, please let Christina and the town managers off the snow. First appointment of the evening, Wanda Robinson. Um, Robertson. Robertson, sorry. Um, HR coordinator with a couple of um, personnel policy change proposals. Um, it's actually two separate ones. I would like to take these individually, and I think they will re require a separate vote. Yeah. Um, on each of them. So, Wanda? Um, good evening. Thanks for having me. I'm here to request two separate changes to the personnel policy. And the first one has, has to do with giving preference to veterans in the hiring process. There is an RSA 283 colon 4 that I put in your packets. Um, the veterans have to show that they served for not less than 90 days in times of war and they were honor honorably discharged. And then if you have two candidates for a position that are equal, equally qualified, the veteran would have preference. So I'd like to put that in the personnel policy with the board's approval. And a widow, unmarried widow of a veteran. Yeah, there's a well. few other statutes that go with it. And also if there is um, an unmarried widow, like you said, then she would have preference too. Okay. Bill, would you like to say anything? Uh, I thought it was excellent research and uh, uh, a great keeping that right on target. Thank you. Anybody else, or would somebody like to make a motion? Or? Also, move that we accept that amendment to the current personnel policy. Second. Uh, on veterans' that. preference. Seconded by uh, Selectman Pierce. All in favor? Unanimous. Well, okay. you made that easy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we made it easy because we left out the discussion part after the motion. <laughs> well, the second one, okay, now this is the... Disgusting. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, I can't help it, Mike. You this yeah. is a, a, a totally separate request, and this would be another change to the personnel policy. 
And what I would be asking for here is when employees have taken a loan from their own individual 457 account mm -hmm. to purchase a primary residence, that they would be able to use their accumulated unused sick leave. Currently what the employees can do, and there's a lot of restrictions on it, you have to have a minimum number of hours, 240 for a 40-hour person, and you cannot sell back more than 500 hours, so it's pretty limited. And what we'd like to do is allow the employees, when it comes time to make a decision about their leave sell back, they could either use it to buy insurance, which is already in the policy, or contribute to their 457 plan. And they also can pay for educational expenses. So this one we'd like to add, paying back 457 loans that they've taken out with their sick time. So I'd like to make that change to the policy with the board's approval. Okay, I, I will so move that we authorize and add that to the personnel policy. We have a second? I'll second that for discussion. Discussion? I would, uh, 457, so the 457 loans are basically education, I, uh, is that correct? No, um, the 457, that is an account each individual employee has, and it's all of their own money. <clears throat> and they can take a loan from that 457 account. Which that has nothing oh. to do with the town. Oh. It's their own individual account, and they can take loans from it. Oh, I thought it was strictly for education. It is not, then. They can no. Do okay. No. The other part of it is, if an employee has un accumulated unused sick leave, mm -hmm. they can sell back to the town mm -hmm. th those hours. Mm -hmm. And there's different ways that the different ways they can use it, like to pay for insurance, mm -hmm. to contribute to 457, or to pay family educational expenses. Oh, okay. What or, we would like to okay. do is to add the ability to pay back 457 loans, okay. but it's only it's limited only the loans that were taken out to purchase a primary residence. Okay, and you're gonna li that's going to be limited to 500 hours, as you said earlier. Then. Yep, that's the maximum they can sell back. Yeah, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, Thank you, for whoever prepared the breakdown of the towns um, that do and don't. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of comments. Um, I'm not in favor of this. Um, by comparison, comparison to other towns, and Rwanda provided us quite a bit yes. of information. Um, we already have a, a very rich benefit. And by adding a purpose such as this, which can be a very expensive one, um, for example, health insurance would be a maximum of, I would suspect, three or four thousand dollars paying your annual health insurance. This one can literally be ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars, whatever, five hundred hours, depending on the hourly rate. Um, based on the analysis that Wanda did, um, 52 towns in New Hampshire, only 52 towns, allow people to turn in <coughs> unused sick time for cash. Um, 93 towns do not allow it. So roughly twice as many um, do not allow turning it in for cash as, as do. Um, of those that um, allow it to be turned in cash, only three of the towns, 28, uh, 28 towns, 10,000 or greater, um, have no restrictions on that, and, and six allow it um, for vacation time or whatever. Um, we also have this um, language in all of the um, union contracts, and by adding to, to this, doesn't affect the union contracts. Those would have to be addressed individually. They're totally separate, yeah. And, and so we're creating a disparity <coughs> between the non-union and the union contracts by going with it. It would add to the expense. And, and fr from a policy standpoint, what we're doing here is a short time ago we added education as a purpose. Mm -hmm. I think that was done yeah. six months, a year ago maybe, wander or whatever. Yeah, I think it was and, last year. And now we've got this purpose. So what's happening is, is an employee is basically saying, oh, I'd like to do that, coming along, making a proposal, and then we're changing the policy or not. And I think if we're going to change the policy, it's better to look at it, step back and look at it globally rather than transactionally every time an employee comes around with a purpose to add it. So I'm opposed to it for those reasons. We had a motion, Mary Louise, mm -hmm. is that correct? We had a second? I have sure. Second. I just want to confirm, who was who the second? Mike. Mike, Second. okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. This, as I read, this is a new sick time, using the, using the employee's money yep. for the contract to purchase or use for the purchase or reimburse for. It's when they've taken out a loan for a primary residence right. 
and they want to pay back that loan. Pay back the loan. So this is for um, our employees' housing? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for that answer. And whether it's uh, a comparison or a contrast between uh, what Hampton does and Seabrook does, what Hampton does and Northampton does, what Hampton does and the rest of the world does, I really don't care. I care about Hampton, I care about our people. And, and when, when that argument and that comparison and that contrast is brought to the fore, um, I, I, it doesn't register with me, and I, I do respect you bringing it forward, Mr. Chairman. But uh, I'm concerned about our folks. It sounds like a noble and honest and uh, uh, basic need, and, and I do support it. And thank you for bringing your points up, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any other comments? Yep. I do. Uh, a, it's the employee's money. B, it reduces our exposure to unfunded liability when individuals retire, I would assume, if they're buying back. Their because they're days. paying back at the current hour hourly rate. Right. Then when they retire or leave or whatever, that amount of sick leave has been removed. It's been decreased. From yes. their accumulated mm -hmm. time. So therefore, the liability to pay off someone when they're leaving reduced. Thank you. It, uh, I would go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I would just comment that, that it's not that simple, and it, it 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 will be an additional expense. The reason for that is you accumulate sick pay. Mm -hmm. There are caps on sick pay. It varies from union to union, non-union, whatever. But well, yeah, this is only for non-union. Right. Let's use four hundred hours. It's four hundred now for and it. It's for the old, you know employees that have a lot of time here. It was fifteen hundred, mm -hmm. but that was changed. Right. So. so essentially, what what occurs is is an employee accrues sick time. They rise to a level. Once you hit that level of four hundred, that's a cap. You can't accrue four hundred and ten or five hundred or whatever. You essentially lose it. Okay. What what this as we add purposes to this. What this essentially allows an employee to do, and it becomes an expense, is as they go through a year and they hit 410, 420, 430, they can, they can sell that back. So it essentially it becomes a source of income. So it doesn't necessarily reduce the liability. And what has essentially occurred is sick time, which was intended in the first place to allow an employee to get paid up to a certain number of days a year, 12 days a year, or whatever, when they're out sick, has become a source of income, and, and we're adding to that. So that's that's my rationale. Mike? One more qu a question, more than anything. That I'm a little confused on the 457. Is that a personal account that each employee has? Yes. And they can borrow money from someplace to buy houses? An employee can have their own individual 457. Okay. And they have the ability to take a loan from that 457. Against their own money? Yep. Oh, okay, against their own money. <laughs> okay, so that, uh, that's what I wanted to clarify in my own mind. So back to <clears throat> the Chairman's thoughts about if you have this cap at 400 hours, and I take out 200 hours or whatever to do this, to, to pay off my 457 loan, mm -hmm. then I can build my yes. 200 hours back up to 400. Mm -hmm. So. So the, argu you? the argument is that I thought was good to start with yeah. really sort of loses its, its win when they do retire because they, they're capped at 400 hours anyway. Well, so what are, what are you, a second-class citizen? You can't continue to accru accrue what you've earned even though you've taken some, you know, this is an ongoing situation where you're earning leave time and, and I mean, time. yeah, but your point was that we'd save money when they retire. Well, that they could still build it back up to 400 hours. You don't gain anything in that end. They're not going to do mean, it up to 400 I, hours. I would be all for it if they weren't able to add it back to their sick time. I'd be all for it, but otherwise I'm against it. You see what I'm saying? To, to your no, point. because they're going to have to earn back. They're not going to all of a sudden pull 200 sick hours out of the air. Mm -hmm. They're working people. They're earning these benefits as they go along. If an employee... Wanda, you correct me if I'm wrong, but employee at the max, using non-union as an example, um, can receive as many as 376 hours a year in leave. That's at the max. Three, um, I would have to check into that. That sounds like a lot. It's, it's right. If you've got the policy there, it's, it's I've mm -hmm. read that today. So 400 sounds like a big number. Mm -hmm. I think it's for somebody that's just starting out with two weeks vacation and whatever, I think it's closer to 176 per year. But anyway, um, do we need to beat it to death any further? Or? 
Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes, 3-2 with Pierce and Nichols opposed. Thanks, Wanda. Thank, Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. Next appointment, Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor, 2013 Equalization Municipal Assessment Data Certificate. Ed? Good evening. Good evening. Um, I did present a, um, for your signature later, a, mm -hmm. a data sheet regarding the equalization ratio. Um, we, we've completed the preliminary analysis for the 2013 equalization ratio. Um, and the purpose of the study, each year we determine through the state uh, reviewing uh, an equalization ratio which is used to equalize our assessments. Um, this year the preliminary ratio was 96.6% which was a decrease of 2% from last year's ratio of 98.7%. Um, the ratio, uh, just to let you know, represents um, an analysis of all the qualified sales that have taken place between October 1, 2012 through September 30th of this year. Um, as the ratio, um, just to let you know, as the ratio decreases, what it represents is an is a appreciation in the marketplace. So the real estate market has actually increased over the past year, sales, sale prices. Um, I also want to let you know the best way to understand the ratio is it's a relationship between those qualified sales and the 2013 assessments. And the 96.6% represents the relationship between those sales um, and those level of assessments, or I should say it represents a level of assessments to those qualified sales. For example, a $100,000, uh, if something's assessed, let's use $100,000 as an example, what it would indicate is in a fair market value opinion of $103,500 utilizing that ratio. Okay. So each year when we develop that, we equalize the assessments for that year in relation to abatements, appeals, and and that type of stuff. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm not answering anything. Questions uh, for the assessor? <coughs> you, need, you need a motion to accept your figures? Well, the, the data, yeah, the, the figures and then the data sheet needs to be signed. We also, once, once it is approved, um, we electronically will send the analysis to the DRA. Right. And they'll, they'll do the, you know, they'll do the final uh, certification of those. How sales. do you want the motion phrased, Dad? Um, the the actual document is. Let me just give you the uh, the 2013 Equalization Municipal Assessment Data Certificate. Um, I guess certifying the preliminary ratio okay. of of 96.6 percent. So if I move the that we accept Ed's recommendation to approve the 2013 Equalization and Data. Whatever. An analysis, analysis, like a preliminary analysis, yep. And uh, sign it if it passes. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, just, just a comment for clarification, um, Ed. Do I have it correct that this, this data and this analysis is actually done by the state um, division or the, the appraisal division of DRA, correct? And they the equalization uh, mm -hmm. division reviews reviews the sales and our we we input all of the assessment data into the system yeah. so we can run these in preliminary reports but yes that will will electronically send to them they'll analyze each sale they may have questions they may need clarification um, yes they they will do the final so what we're doing yeah. is we're essentially mm -hmm. saying yep the data is right right yeah good so all we get, one more point so all these explanations I saw in this preliminary explanations is reasons why they may differ a little bit yeah, typically with the explanation are the unqualified sales. Uh -huh. we, we're explaining why they should be unqualified. They'll look at those. I, you know, most of them have certain codes with them that automatically disqualify them. Um, I, I noticed that some were in her family, and so they sold them right. for a dollar or a hundred dollars or whatever, and the market value was significantly yeah, more. Exactly. And I, I know of one personally where the you were, uh, it was assessed at 400000 I think it sold for 186 and that's a long story, which I'm sure you probably caught that, too, in your analysis. That means you don't have a d identified by name or street, they're by some kind of tax code. I have no idea if it's in here or not. 
One other comment that I think is kind of interesting is we have roughly a little over 9,000 properties in the town of Hampton. This analysis is based on about 300 that sold within a period of a year. Yeah. So. Anyway, if we can take a vote, all in favor? Unanimous. Thanks, Ed. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Okay. Next, I'd like to uh, slide the appointment that's listed on the agenda for the fire chief related to asbestos removal at the former beach fire station. I think that's going to be a quick one, and I don't think it's actually the deputy that's standing in for the chief needs to hang around through yeah. the uh, DPW appointment. Yeah, so, you Jamie? Done. You, done. Thank you, you can handle it. Thank you for your consideration. I'd also like <laughs> to <laughs> thank uh, Mr. Noyes for his as well. For allowing this to happen. Deputy Chief Ayotte, for the yes, record. Well, I come to you tonight to uh, request a uh, that the board, ha I understand that you have all been updated as to yes. the situation with asbestos. The chief has requested that we um, waive the situation, the requirement for bidding for additional work at the site in accordance with the town purchasing policy and also approve the change order to grant us the authority to expend the funds for the purpose of removing the asbestos that was found upon further examination of the old building at 64 Ashworth Avenue. Mm -hmm. I would so move. <coughs> that we accept I'll, that recommendation. I'll that for discussion. Okay, purposes. Mary Louise moves. <coughs> Mike uh, Pierce uh, seconds. Not for discussion. Uh, why do we need to have not have Betty? Well, we we've gone through the process once, uh -huh. and this is a, this is a change order. Uh, as it stands, though, it's a change because it's an increase in cost because there's a new finding on more asbestos. Uh, the company that's being represented right now is a subcontractor to Ekman Construction, okay. and they're doing an absolutely wonderful job. They've already uh, mitigated all of the asbestos that was found on the precinct garage mm -hmm. and all of the known asbestos at 64 Ashworth Avenue. Yeah. The new asbestos coming out would require, <laughs> if, if we're allowed, we'll have the same company perform the mitigation. Yeah. As it stands, Ekman, we are responsible as owners uh -huh. to remove the asbestos that, right. that hazardous materials falls on us. Right. And as it stands, um, Ekman Construction, their subcontractors were the lowest bidder when we first put it out. So uh, a new bidding process will not necessarily show us any difference in bids. The, the current um, contractor okay. was lowest prior. And we're in the process of tearing it down as we speak. No, sir. Uh, as it stands, what you've seen so far is the mitigation uh -huh. of the hazardous material. So if you look at the precinct garage as an example, the roofing material has been removed. Uh -huh. Prior to removing or demolishing the building, we need to remove all of the known hazards. Okay. At 64 Ashworth Avenue, above the old dispatch and also in the boiler room, uh -huh. we had a lot of asbestos that needed to be removed. So they had negative pressure, as you might imagine. They had to remove everything. Anything that was friable needed to be taken care of, and it went into a dumpster that was sealed. Um, when they were going through the process, they noticed there was an old part of the building. They, they had done samples everywhere, as you might imagine. And then once they uncovered several layers of the exterior vinyl clad siding, they noticed that there was more asbestos against the building. Mm. I believe it. You can't rip it down when there's still contaminated material. Right. That's true. Right so yeah. that needs to happen before we can actually demolish the building. Okay. So uh, what, do you, what are you asking for, for money on this? Uh, well, worst case scenario, the Chief's done it out, and so they've also estimated that if they were to estimate at 100% coverage of asbestos, the numbers are $23,686. We anticipate and we certainly hope that that number will come in lower. The, I, I don't know if it, it came out there. The Chief called me this afternoon, but okay. essentially what they, they found is, is there's vinyl siding on the building. Mm -hmm. the, the vinyl siding was a go-over, and the siding underneath the vinyl is asbestos yeah. um, <coughs> uh, siding shingles or whatever. Yep. The, I believe the vendor is given a price based on a per square foot basis, depending on the number of square feet, and if it's all case, asbestos, then it ends up at the, the $23,000 number get it done. the the urgency um, associated yeah. with this in terms of you know the time frame to bid and wanting to waive it is apparently related to wanting to get it out of there get yeah. the parking lot paved before the asphalt yeah. um, well, lands, so um, the weather goes down. shut down that's right they have a lot of site work that needs to be done drainage as you yeah. might imagine and then paving and they'd like to see that completed as soon as possible before the snow starts to fly yeah. I'm voting yes um, before we we call for a vote I I don't um, I, I can I can go along with, with waiving the bidding process in terms of a formal bid, a, a document that goes out in two and three and four weeks to do it or whatever, but I think it would be prudent 
to at least pick up the phone and call a couple of other vendors. I think that's something that could be not the formal bidding process, okay. but get a couple of other vendors in. I think that could be done within a matter of a few days and to get some price comparisons just to do a sanity check. It is a potentially a 20 year, 23,000, maybe it's 15,000, or it's not small change or whatever. So I certainly, if it were my business, I would make a couple of phone calls. I wouldn't put out a bid in a small, I would make a, so I would, I guess um, amend um, the motion, if 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 you will, to request <coughs> that that um, some comparative um, figures being obtained from a couple of other vendors. I'll second the amendment. Okay. Can we any further discussion on the amendment, or can we vote on the amendment? Vote on the amendment. Okay. All in favor of the amendment? Unanimous. Okay. Motion as amended. All in favor of the motion as amended. Um, so essentially we, what we have, let's just confirm, what we have, have voted on is to both waive the purchasing policy as well as to approve the change order. Correct. But you're asking for uh, some more price qualifications. Right. But we're not asking that it come back um, to us yeah. where okay. you've got the authority and whatever. So. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. I appreciate your time. Have a great night. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, James. <coughs> Okay, next appointment, uh, Keith Noyes, um, several different subjects. Keith? And Mr. Gingras and Mr. Doobie. Good evening. Uh, I have Mike and Mike here that are going to help me with the uh, quarterly report. Um, Chris is off this week for a well-deserved vacation. He's out in the woods hunting, so wish him some good luck. Um, I'm, I sent you all uh, detailed copies of the individual division work yep. reports. Yep. Um, hope you've had a chance to review those. Uh, we can respond to any questions in regards to those. But I did just want to go briefly over some of the major projects that we've got going. Uh, number one is the II study, the infiltration and inflow study for the Hampton Beach area. Uh, as you may recall, we awarded that bid to Underwood Engineers of Portsmouth. Uh, we held a kickoff meeting last Thursday, um, and they're starting right away with uh, reviewing existing plans and reports and going over that information uh, that's available. Then they're going to be doing a series of uh, flow monitoring and they call it flow isolation, as well as looking for um, Different features in the uh, in the plans, uh, the, uh, uh, sump pumps in buildings and things like that. So um, they're well off, well on their way with that. Their completion is June first of two thousand and fourteen. Second one is the Exeter Road project that was awarded to CMA Engineers. Uh, the survey is complete, and they are um, in the process of. Viewing the um, geographics, the geographical information for the from the survey, they'll be looking at the sewer system and the stormwater system, and they're going to be scheduling a public stakeholder meeting within the next few weeks, and uh, their report is done is due for the end of December. The third project is the downtown drain project that again was awarded to CMA engineers. That's the hazard <coughs> mitigation uh, project. Uh, the design is complete. The estimate is complete. We need to come back to the board soon to talk about where we go from here because as I had warned the um, board uh, six or eight months ago that I anticipated that project was going to come in higher than what we had funding for, uh, and it did. Uh, but I've got some ideas on how we may be able to pull that off because that is an important project that I'd like to proceed with. <coughs> Number five, uh, I'm sorry, four, West Side Sewers, uh, that was awarded to GM Co. Contractors. We've started work on that project, and uh, that's moving along slowly but surely. Uh, as we expected, they are having some uh, challenges with the dewatering uh, down there. Five is the Old Mill Pond Dam. Um, in addition to the study that you heard the report on a couple of weeks ago, um, I have prepared and presented to the state one of the, a couple of the requirements for the 
letter of deficiency that we received from DES was uh, an emergency action plan, uh, and that is a complete plan on how to handle any kind of emergencies if the dam fails or whatever. Typically, that's subcontracted out for an engineering firm to do. Uh, I'm pleased to say that I got my, I worked through it, was able to uh, get all the information, and I, it was due last Friday, and I, it, I was running a little bit late, but I got it in on Friday morning. Uh, in time for the uh, the due date, and with that, I had submitted the request to extend the the requirements of the LOD for two years, and uh, it's interesting because I got an email from the state today, not questioning the two year extension, but just questioning one of the things that I've already said that we've done, <coughs> and just asking about that. So I thought that was good news that they, I was a little nervous they were going to call me up and say, what's this two year business? But I, th I think we're going to be in good shape with that. Uh, and then number six is the grist mill uh, project itself, the historic grist mill. Uh, we've got the foundation bid due this Thursday at 2 o'clock for the redoing of the foundation. And as you may recall, I had submitted an LCHIP grant for $20,000. We have yet to hear about that. Um, but what I'm really hoping is that uh, we're able to do the foundation with the money that we have from two years ago, I think it was two years ago, uh, town meeting uh, appropriation, and then get the roof redone and the siding redone in the windows so that the whole building is weatherproofed and, and protected from the elements. And then as far as the interior of the project, you know, we'll see where we go from there, where the town wants to go. But my goal, especially if we can get the $20,000 from the L chip, is just to encapsulate the building uh, with new shingles and new um, windows and so forth and get it totally protected from the elements. The, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention and I'm kind of I'm really pleased with is that I've started a training program for my staff. It's called the Fish Manager Training Program. I don't know if any of you have heard of the Pikes World Famous Fish Market in Seattle, Washington, but they have um, developed a management training program after their management techniques out there and it's all about this fish market how to make, how to improve productivity and morale and their claim to fame is if you can do it in a fish market and get people psyched about their jobs then you can do it anywhere. So it's real, they've, um, they've got this program, it's a series of six different videos and a lot of discussion and so forth and uh, we have started, we've had two um, sessions actually in this room and we're ha we have all the Teamsters, all the management team, but I'm also really pleased to say that we've had six SEA employees that have asked to participate in the program with hopes of learning management skills and so forth uh, so that they can, uh, you know, maybe get promoted along the way. And they're actually very, very interested in this, and uh, it's working out really good. It's, uh, I haven't seen any of them falling asleep yet, so that's good. <laughs> But uh, so anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. He's got a couple of uh, projects to talk about. Um, last time we spoke, I'm going to start with the fleet division first. Um, last time I spoke with you all, we had purchased a new fleet software. Um, since the purchase of that software, um, I've attended a fleet conference in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I found this to be a great help. Um, it was very beneficial. They conducted simulated practicals with the software with a simulated fleet. Um, for example, building your own fleet, scheduling PMs, um, vehicle work histories, productivity, and various costs. Mm -hmm. So now, coming back, I've started to build our fleet and have all our vehicles in, and we're actually starting to implement it into the system and taking all the new vehicles that come in for PMs or what have you into the system. So now we'll be able to track them, and I hope that Mr. Bean can um, answer some of the questions that you were thinking about from our last meeting. So if anyone wants to come down and see the software, how it works, I'll be more than glad to to show you its its functions and, and what have you. Um, we've also hired a new full-time fleet mechanic to our work division in the um, vehicle maintenance. His name's Joe Bishop, and he is a veteran as well, and he fits the moral fiber of our department well, and we're very happy to have him on board. Right. And um, he fits the mold grade. He's, um, we hope to have him around for a long time. Um, 
next to the transfer station, and we've started accepting cooking oil for disposal. Um, upon taking that cooking oil, there's a company called Amenco that takes it, and they use it for biodiesel fuel. So it's, it's, it's a free service, and they're getting to get it to a good cause. And um, we've also implemented the recommendation fees for the transfer station, which were those five items, which were the stuffed chairs, the <coughs> stuffed furniture, the appliances, the twin size mattresses, and the larger size, full size mattress and box frames. You're a brave man inviting us down there again. <laughs> Come on down. You're always welcome. You're always welcome. So you're, rid of, you're going to get rid of the paper folders? Yeah. Little by little. We're going to we're going to try to do some some paperless shop and, and uh, be more efficient. God, we're going modern. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the Mike. watering project went very well with the water line, uh, the contractor water line industries. Yeah. And uh, it's mostly done, but there's a couple s small little things that they just got to button up, which should be done by the end of this year. Um, Past month, the average cake has been around 27 and a half percent on the blended, which is a lot better than what the old one was putting out. Um, and that project came under bit uh, under budget, which is good. It's always good. <laughs> the uh, Church Street project is moving along a lot quicker now that they're above ground. Um, they should be putting the uh, roof trusses up by the end of this week. The estimated uh, completion date is about the middle of March 2014. Uh, we're still waiting for the draft DES permit to come out. Uh, I was actually contacted last Friday from EPA and they were uh, inquiring about a couple of the upgrades that we had in the past, so I'm kind of filling that in for them. And and hopefully shortly that should be sent out. Uh, other than that, everything's running pretty good. Uh, every piece of equipment at the treatment plan is operational and functioning good. And, you know, I, I owe that to uh, the team that I have down there. Okay, questions yeah. for uh, on the report? A couple things. Mike, um, so the Church Street pump station, you said the actual completion where it's really pumping, when it takes over the pumping function, will come in March. But where they're going now, it'll be secured from the elements, you think, for the winter? Mm -hmm. They'll be able to get the yeah. the cover on or whatever you're doing with it. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. And the Fournier Press is, is work this, where we're getting the 27%. That's a beautiful piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed with that. Okay, good. Oh, one more thing. Sewer and drain. Um, Computer equipment will do very well when it gets moved into the new washdown shed facility, <coughs> won't it? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions? Mike? Uh, you said something about a stakeholders meeting for Exeter Road? Yes. I know she had one in here for the um, Old Mill Pond Dam project. Was that a public meeting? Yes. Okay. And it was noticed? Yes. Okay. And you're going to have one for Exeter Road? Yes. Soon, you don't know roughly when that. Um, I just emailed the engineer today and asked him to schedule out as soon as possible. The reason why I ask is because when I think of a stakeholder, every taxpayer has a stake in both of these projects, and they're all welcome to come. We noticed you know, that. I mean, but I was just going to mention that for the public. If mm -hmm. you have a problem yeah. with either one of these issues, you should be involved. Mm -hmm. and if there's extra road stakeholders, I'd say anybody who has a concern about extra road whatsoever would want to pay attention to when that's noticed. And where I should have mentioned also, we're planning on having a stakeholder meeting even for the II study down at the beach. Good. And because with all these projects, I find it's valuable to get to, to allow the public an opportunity to come in and provide input and, you know, ask any questions and just give us their ideas. So on the II study, you would have the stakeholders give you ideas about how to do it? Well, not necessarily, but it's not not how to do it. But they may be able to tell us of some issues that they've had, like with sewer backups oh, or okay. what things mm -hmm. like that. But just oh, to, okay. I've always found it's good to engage the public in these type of projects uh, right up front. Oh, no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Good. That's all I have, Mr. Chen. Okay. Any other questions, Phil? Yeah, I'd just like to comment, uh, Director. Uh, great job to your uh, key staff. Great job to your men and women. Great job. 
a great summer. A lot's on your plate, and uh, it's a diverse uh, set of responsibilities, and you guys do a magnificent job. It's a very, very tough department, very tough. And they're all tough departments, but yours um, isn't as bright and shiny. And uh, um, We're making it that way. Yeah, and, and <laughs> We're working it to it. And you're, uh, you're, do you're doing a great job. Thank you very and, much. Uh, to, to your men and to your women down there, thank you. Thank you, thank you. that's much appreciated, those comments. Richard, I have one more quick Thought. Let's give Mike a oh. shot. Mike, do you have anything? Or? Nope. Okay. Thanks. 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 Um, because Mike Gingers mentioned the furniture uh, and the upgrading, we have any resolution on a roll-off for the to get rid of that furniture going in the hoppers? Um, I believe Mark had made some contacts and he was going to have something prepared for you actually, okay. so I could have I could so talk to Mark. So we don't see any more morning. couches getting in there, messing up the rams. We're actually all. meeting tomorrow morning with yeah, Mark at nine. If you remember to bring that Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. you awesome. um, I have a Thanks. couple of comments and questions. One is I just like to clarify and make sure people understand if I'm correct the um, DES or EPA permit that Mike mentioned is essentially a five-year. Permit is that correct? And yes. and it sounds like that there's some optimism on their part, and if that is successful, then that pretty much, um, barring unusual circumstances, gives us another five years without having to deal with the kind of things that Exeter and mm -hmm. um, Portsmouth and some of the other towns are dealing with, you know, copper and nitrates and all the other so. That's Actually, uh, I think that's the reason they're leaving us alone, is they got their hands full with <laughs> all those other towns. <laughs> maybe, they can, us. maybe they can keep them busy for 10 or 15 years yeah. or <laughs> whatever. Um, the other is a question. The uh, I, I noticed um, what you were bringing out in, in terms of the um, cake percent solids, 27 to 28 percent. That's really spiked up in the last month. That's a good thing because it ultimately saves us money because right. we pay the tipping that fees, which I just looked at the budget, it's about 200000 a year. So it's a big number. So if there's more water in it, then it's costing us more. Um, just one question and, and kind of a comment. The Of all the things in the budget that we turned into the Budget Committee, the thing that I was least comfortable with, and, and probably the biggest single reason I voted against it, was the, the fact that we only had $26,000 in paving. Um, in the budget that we turned in. And I'm, I'm just wondering, as you go into the Budget Committee review, is is there enough optimism with this um, this this um, new press and the impact that it may have on the tipping fees for sludge, where we may be able to reduce that and slide some of that savings into increasing the paving? Is that something that can be considered? So we can consider that. We can talk about that. Believe me, I would like to increase the paving. Yeah. Right, right. Because I think that that's the one of all all departments or whatever. I think yeah. that's the one that stuck out for me that mm -hmm. as a as a problem. So, I we all set then on the quarterly report. I just to dwell on that. That's a, a taxpayer obligation. We <coughs> have to take care of that. So I'm very concerned about that too. We have to take care of all the roads. No, it's one that we already all started a project of a two-year project. It's now about a year and a half or two years behind, thanks to a lot of issues. Thank you very much. Okay, Keith, are we ready to move into the solid waste collection proposal? Yes. So I've provided so, so I've pro so I've provided the board with a report outlining three options for consideration for future management of commercial solid commercial uh, trash collection, which include one, make no changes. Two, discontinuing private commercial solid waste service entirety. And three, is to provide limited commercial solid waste service. I've also provided answers and questions, two questions and thought from individual board members, and I've forwarded them to you, that, that you have forwarded to me, and now I've re responded to you. Making no changes in discontinuing commercial service is pretty well self-explanatory. I don't need a lot of uh, explanation on that. The providing limited commercial service would allow the continuance of commercial curbside collection, but at a cost to the commercial entities and uh, businesses. Basically, <coughs> all commercial properties would be entitled to one cart per week pickup for free 
as that would be the same with all the residents in town. They would get a nine, up to a 96 gallon cart and they would have one pickup per week. But with this idea, and it's only an idea for your consideration, extra carts beyond the one 96 gallon cart in or extra days would be charged. I have provided you with some data on some preliminary calculations that I've come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, I've reviewed those with our finance director and actually uh, the chairman went over them and had some questions and thoughts on those as well. There's no doubt that they would have to be fine-tuned fine if we were to proceed with that, but I, I think in just to be straight with everybody, there's no doubt that uh, this would be a hefty charge to assess to the businesses, uh, especially some of the businesses that have 10 or 15 carts out yeah. four or five days a week, or some of them may even have them seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So the, the actual cost that I've got in there calculation uh, per cart per uh, pickup uh, may fluctuate a little bit, but I don't think it's going to fluctuate all that much if you want to capture the full cost of what it's costing the town for that service. I think I'm fairly close. They can be tweaked a little bit. That doesn't mean that if you were to proceed with this, that in, this is quite common in, in, in ta other towns, that you could uh, decide on uh, subsidizing that expense by the tax base or incrementally go up, o go up over a period of five, ten years so that you're not hitting them with a big uh, assessment right off the bat. I'm just throwing those ideas out to you. Um, I have spoke uh, to the, um, I had a meeting today with the, uh, the foreman of the collection crew about the process with the sticker system and I explained it to him and I showed him the stickers and uh, he does feel that that's workable. Uh, he was confident that we might have to tweak it but that the system of putting stickers on the card itself showing the days of the week that they would be picked up and uh, the duration whether it be for three months or six months or for the full year because in theory, um, the only stickers that would need to be really stand out uh, would be the ones that are commercial that um, are on a limited basis because the residents would have, say, a green sticker that would, a green fluorescent sticker, and they get to know those. These guys are pretty good. They've got good memories. They'd know those right off the bat, and on that green sticker may say W for Wednesday. So they know that. Uh, and same with a lot of the businesses in town. There are a number of businesses. They might be a, an attorney's uh, office or something that only puts out one 96-gallon cart <coughs> per week. So they wouldn't be necessarily affected. Mm. So every the, the ones that get the once a week would have like the green sticker with the date on it. But then, so the, and that's the probably 80 to 90 percent of the, the carts out there. So the only ones they need to pay attention to would be the bright orange ones that would show something different. And as uh, Ryan and I discussed, uh, those guys would get to know right off the bat after one or two weeks what the story is. They would have the orange and then they may have, you know, M when W and then F for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then on it, it would have the date. So anyway, uh, I think the process is workable. The other option that I looked into is going to a, a microchip system where uh, they put a microchip in the card itself, and then as uh, the card goes either on the sidearm or on the rear lifter, it automatically reads that. Uh, the problem, and, and uh, I found out that uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, has this system and they've been using it. Uh, if, the t if the town is interested in going that route, I would certainly want to talk to the public works director up there and find out, you know, how they feel about that system. The concern that I have with that system versus the sticker system 
is the capital expense. We're talking um, initially prior, I can't remember the figures, but I think I put in around $100,000. And then to maintain the system, we have to get into billing and so forth. You get into a huge expense. So, you know, one thing we may want to look at is if, if you are interested in this process of the sticker system, is starting out with the sticker, sticker system and seeing that how that works, and then possibly if, if, if we feel we, we should go the other way, then work our way into the microchip system. Uh, the advantage with the microchip system, I think, is you get a better handle on actual volume than the sticker system does. Um, so that's really it. I really wanted to respond to any questions that you may have with the information that I've provided. Okay, questions, uh, Kate? Okay. Yep. I, I have a concern, A, about getting too complicated because we are in enough of a pickle for the waste as it is. And B, the actual, just the geography of the beach, if you have a small business and you can fit two carts out in the front comfortably. But with some of the larger businesses and the volume of waste, and some of them are going to require seven day a week pick up. You're not going to be able to get away with five days a week on it. Um, I I don't know. I think it's a policy decision on the part, obviously, of this board. And I, I'm thinking that we probably ought to simply give some notice for the commercial properties and uh, as of a date certain, whenever, uh, for them to arrange to pool pool their resources and uh, go with private contractors. I'm not sure what you're saying. Are you you're saying you're not... In lieu of not trying to implement a whole big complicated system like this with all the microchips or the stickers on the thing or the 25 carts out in the front or the cart in front of a rental unit on F Street that's overflowing after two days with the beer bottles and the beer cans and all the potential messes and putting the department into even more more of a stress, more of a complicated situation than they have now, I think it's probably the time to start distancing ourselves from the town pickup of commercial waste and work out a schedule with the businesses uh, to have a reasonably orderly transition uh, so that they can uh, go to private contractors to remove the commercial waste as uh, many of the businesses, particularly uptown, have done. Other questions or comments on Mary Louise's comments? Or? I would uh, have some for the uh, director. Uh, take, for example, um, the folks that were in from Kings Highway. They have a seasonal uh, private concern that I used to uh, go in on a Hampton Publix Works uh, garbage truck and pick up mm -hmm. um, a boatload of trash, and I think you still do that. And uh, we talked about at the last meeting, and maybe you don't have the answers, how much does that cost you to, to service that particular account? That, that account itself? Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, I don't have that yeah. answer for and, you. And, right. and that's fine, and, yeah. and how busy you are and how challenged you are. And then going forward is um, if we don't know how much things cost, then why would we deprive somebody of a service? And just on that particular uh, risk, and I, I don't, the, the folks who are in here talking, they're business owners. I am in the business community. I have no business relationship with these people. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have any children in school. They don't uh, um, have any wild parties. It's a very well run organization. They pay hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. Uh, when we start depriving uh, taxpayers of this one service they get, what's to prohibit them to, say, um, get a private ambulance service, a security guard, and why should they have to pay taxes at all in Hampton? They're not here in the winter. They don't need the roads plowed. And uh, it, it seems to me that it's uh, a little narrow. To, uh, to go down this road when we can't even establish costs. Additionally, there's other pressures on the business community to include the, uh, the new Health Care Act that will be uh, affecting a lot of these employers in town. 
over 50 employees, there are substantial administrative costs that will be assigned to them. Um, it still is a tough uh, economy out there. The economy is essentially flat. <clears throat> and so this, to me, uh, is not an attack, but um, perhaps a lethargic and slothful pursuit to change the status quo that we really haven't been able to identify real metrics on. And I'm opposed to it. I don't think anyone has demonstrated uh, any factual basis that this costs too much, that it costs too little, or that it's not just fine just the way it is. And going forward on that, we have a year and a half uh, requisite from the town manager to develop information on what we are spending for services on the state property. We don't have that, but we're eager to start further taxing, further costing indigenous uh, citizens, business owners, and taxpayers. I'm vehemently opposed to that. I think that's uh, going for the small game. And uh, as we approach what is going on two years without any information uh, that's creditable to have a dialogue with, say, Senator or Representative Mums in the back, uh, or our delegation, the Governor's Council, uh, and, I, and I, I am being loquacious on this, but again, I just think it's uh, on, on real big dollars, um, it's, uh, it's not doing any heavy lifting. And I think your department does a great job, and, and I think you will never make anybody happy. And I, I have not been informed, uh, as a New Hampshire educated gentleman, in Hampton Public Schools at, at UNH, at their business school, that there is a problem and that it needs to be changed. And that the costs that are associated with trash pickup are any more different than police providing protection to restaurants and, and establishments of the beach, or any different than should we charge parents with children more because their children attend school. Or if you own a r property and you rent to ch uh, families with children, should they be charged more? And I, I don't know where this ends, but I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's fitting, and I don't think it's proper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Selectman Dean, I'd like to say just reiterate the fact that I was tasked by this board. I understand that. Okay, but I want to be clear here because I was tasked by the board to look at the commercial operation and come back with options. Mm -hmm. That's what I've done. I've come back with three different options, one of which is just leave the things the way they are. I'm not advocating any of these three. I've just tried. I can't think of a fourth option. Okay, and, and I, I, I think, I think uh, from my comments that I am a strong advocate for option number one, which is to leave right. it status quo. Thank you, sir. I, I want to follow up on Can I, uh, let, let's just let the people who haven't gone once let first, Mary Louise. Let me just respond to Phil okay. really quickly. All right. Galley Hatch doesn't send kids to school either. This is a, at heart, and as in addition to a money issue, it's a fairness issue. Running a commercial operation is a business, and there are business expenses that one would associate with running a business and making a profit, we hope. It's a tough economy for taxpayers, too. And and after all these years, and we've been doing it for many years, and people, I hope, are grateful for the services they received from the town, this is different. I don't have kids in school anymore either, but I'm still paying for it. It's, it's different in the context that I don't make any money on my house. I generate waste and I pay my taxes, but I don't make any profit on my home. This is a business expense. These individuals are running businesses. It is patently unfair for Hannaford, for Sanborns, for Galley Hatch, for the hundreds of other small businesses that I can name who have been carrying the burden to pay for disposal of their own waste all <coughs> these years. And I think it's time to take this burden off the Public Works Department, transition gracefully and gradually, but I think this has got to stop. Okay, I'd like to let the either I'll Mike or up. Mike who haven't had anything to say yet an opportunity. Go ahead. Okay, <laughs> well, I have two or three uh, uh, things in relation. Nothing to do with your report. Thank you, Keith, it was a nice report. Gives us some choices. Uh, I like your idea of presenting the uh, the chips and the not chips and the stickers. I think that's a good idea. When I first looked, I said, "What's the difference between these two? And then I compared the columns. I said, "Aha! About a hundred and sixty thousand dollars worth of difference." <laughs> that's what got my attention. But anyway, back to my comments about this. I think that um, if we go down any of these roads. 
I think one thing we have to take into very con careful consideration is, uh, like Mr. B uh, Bean mentioned, uh, the, the trailer park at Kings Highway. That's a, a unique situation. We have to be very careful how we handle that. And besides that, when we look at the beach itself, there's not any place for commercial dumpsters. So right. we run into a problem that maybe, even though it may be distasteful from some people's point of view, it's definitely in the best interest of the overall beach to have a common pickup. And that right now is the town. And they've already bought our barrels in good faith. So one could argue that what we're doing right now at the beach all by itself is working. Now, if we want to go back to these choices, that eliminates uh, choice two. Okay? I think we have to have, we have to pick up the, the beach trash, the businesses. I mean, uh, I just don't see another way to do that from a practical point of view. Cost, put the cost out of the picture. Just You can't have just the dumpsters all over the place. They'd be in the street and everything else. But now back to the cost. One could argue that they don't get services 52 weeks a year. And therefore, one could say, well, the standard will be you get 52 pickups, like everybody does in town, to make it equal. Everything beyond that we could charge or something like that. That's a concept one could consider as part of your plan, in fact. And then the second thing we could do is we don't have to charge the 1170 or the 10 whatever it is. We can break this in at $2 a barrel until we see how it goes. And if it works, fine. If it doesn't, fine. Then that will satisfy some people's complaints about all of your people being involved with trash. That would give us some amount of revenue, so to speak, that would offset maybe having your people tied up with trash, like some people seem to think that's the case, and free them up for some other things to do by some amount there. So I think we, when we look at the fee schedule, it doesn't have to pay for itself. There's nothing written that says we have to charge what it costs us to do. I mean, there's nothing in this town we've ever done that we charge exactly what it costs us to do. I don't think we've ever done anything like that in this town. It'd be a first. If you can tell me one, I'll listen to it. But anyway, uh, we, well, we register your cars. It costs you two or three hundred dollars to register your cars. It doesn't cost the town that much money to do that. So let's let's be practical here. Uh, all the things we do. So I mean, I agree with uh, Mr. Bean's point about we. I don't have any kids in the school system. I'm paying property tax. I think I get my good chunk of my property but tax bill is school tax. So I think if we go into this, if we decide to go down the route of uh, choice three there, I think we have to massage that very carefully because, uh, after all, the beach only is open for three months, and that's what, 12 weeks. They don't get 52 uh, week, uh, weeks of pickup, so we'd have to allow for that somehow. Even if you go down this path, you have to allow for that uneven thing. That would also apply to the King's Trailer Park, uh, King Street, uh, St King's Highway Trailer Park. So. There's a lot of things we'd have to massage here, so I think we have to go into this very carefully. That's all I have to say, Mr. Mike. If, if, as an example, you were going to pick up the trash at the trailer park on Kings Highway, the containers have to be brought out to the street. Where are you going to put them? Mm -hmm. Well, we're picking them up right now. Trailer park. No. Well, I'm sorry. Actually, we're not. Uh, because, actually, because we waited until the latest decision of the board. Until they closed. Until they closed. But next year, that's why they are in here because they're concerned about that. So, do they technically have to bring everything out to Kings Highway? According to this board's policy, correct. Mm -hmm. If they put a containment area up. By King's Highway with a gate, would you go in there and pick them up there? Not unless this board directed us to. So we still have the issue of going on private property, mm -hmm. right? That that that, that you're, that's, you're, that's you're the, hitting. That's the first thing. Yep. That we have a, that's a different issue than right. what we're talking about tonight. That's but but it but it's directly related to mm -hmm. it because yep. you take a a place like that and put the number of cots that they have 
out on the side of King's Highway in the summer, and it's going to be an issue. Yep. They have, I, I believe, roughly about 26 carts combining trash and recycling. In the, in the back and corner they, there? They have two two areas still, don't they? One on the... No, they only one have on, one. Just back, the one on the north end? Back back, back north. Yeah, back and north corner. Right, it's like a gated off. They, and they used to have one in the southern mm -hmm. east corner that you had to do. I'm not aware of that. I'm not sure if that's still there or not. Uh, it, it is. I don't know if it's there or not, but we're not picking it up. I don't, I don't believe yeah. that well, is there, and I'm based on, I didn't see it, but also based on conversations we've had with like Ryan Sharp. I know whatever, we're I think it's down to I the know we're only picking just up Just the one. one. Yeah. They, they've consolidated it to that one area. Yes. So, they, so they have to put it out near the road, and they'd have to have a place in the right of way where they could, where mm -hmm. they could put 26 mm -hmm. cats. Did you go there once a week, or? No, it's more than that, I believe. Twice? Yeah, I think it might three? be three times well, a week. My impression yes. is that it's three times a week. Three yeah. times. It's a good thing you got six months to think about it. I <laughs> think you're going to need it. Um, and down on the beach, the same way. Some of those lots are very narrow. Mm -hmm. And the volume that they're going to put out is going to create an issue with, then I see something in here about 10 feet, two cats, mm -hmm. so 50 feet, you don't get very many. Uh, and then with cars packed down there, it hasn't worked anyway, has it? Don't you have to get them, out of, well. the, get them out of the driveway Not or well. whatever? It's a, it's a challenge. So, so if you had them across the 50 feet of the lot, how are you going to? The cars are going to park in front of them. They're not going to stop that. We have that problem in numerous places. Right. Mm -hmm. So there are other issues besides just saying that you're going to put it curbside and pick it up. Yeah. We need to look at before we get into this too far. I mean, it's just the more you do, the worse it gets. Um. I'll set my yeah. I, I have a couple of comments I jotted down, notes as people were talking, whatever. I think first about the trailer park. Um, for me, personally, the trailer park is not a cost issue. Those people pay huge taxes right. in relation to what they get for services or whatever. I don't recall the, you know, the numbers, but it's absolutely huge. There's no kids in the schools. It's only open six months out of the year. So it's, it's not about cost. Right. But the trailer park is, is a decision that we've already made. So if we were to pick up the trailer park next year, just be aware it would require reversing a decision that we already have made. That decision mm -hmm. being a global decision, not unique to the trailer park, that we're not going to go on private property. Um, so that's what's driving that. For me, I felt bad about that. And then whenever it was a couple of months ago, I went down there and I drove through. And I just, it, it just, to me, it just didn't make sense to be having these big side arms going through those roads in the trailer park and you've got to I won't go any further but if you're curious go down there you can't now because it's closed off but take a look at it, it it's I, I mean I was going through in a pickup truck it was kind of tight quarters or whatever so for me it's not about cost it's about a safety issue and keep you correct me if I'm wrong in terms of the I, I don't really think it's practical <coughs> for them to be moving the stuff out curbside they'd be wheeling carts from the back right-hand corner yep. out to the curb and when I've gone by there um, by and large the area out in front of that trailer park in Kings Highway there's parking there okay so y you can't really put them there I don't think anybody wants to see you eliminate the parking right um, there so um, you know the, the the trailer park is is an issue I feel bad about it but one thing I, I don't think you're going to be answer be able to answer it tonight but one thing I'd like to know is what is it actually going to cost that trailer park if they have to to put a dumpster in there because if they put a dumpster in there they put the dumpster in the back and a private entity not a town entity is having to go in and and pick that, that up the problem solved and for me how bad I feel about the trailer park depends on 
how much it's 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 costing them. So is it possible to get an idea of, of that, Keith? I wouldn't be able unless they shared that cost with me. Waste management yeah. will not give yeah. me what their costs are. Fine. I tried to get the cost for Rye and uh, Northampton, and yeah. I couldn't get the cost. I mean, okay. I had to go kind of around the bend <laughs> to get the cost of that, and it wasn't well. You know, they didn't like giving me the cost, but waste management. So I could ask. You know, I have a rapport with the owners. I could ask them if they've mm -hmm. checked into it what their cost yep. is going to okay. be. That would be the best thing because they okay. know what That's the fine. volume yeah. is and whatever. Right. Okay. Um, I've got several other comments, mostly driven by the comments that were made. Um, Keith and I talked about this Friday, and, and essentially the, the scope of what we're talking about here is <coughs> about 300 properties. Correct, Keith? Th this idea of, of charging people for the more than once a week pickup um, mm -hmm. would impact about 300 properties. And... We figure that we pick up at an absolute minimum three to four thousand properties a week. Maybe it's as many as five thousand or fifty-five hundred. We don't. That's not a number that DPW at the moment has a handle on. But the bottom line, the impact of this is about five to ten percent of the properties that we pick up will be affected by having to pay, um, whereas whereas the balance um, wouldn't. One of the things that concerned me about charging and in particular at the level of 1050, and I agree with the point that Mike was making is if we go forward with this, there's nothing that says we have to charge 1050. Um, I drove around the beach, and the, the most number of barrels I could identify on one property was 13 barrels at one business. And I suspect, I don't know this for a fact, but I suspect that business is putting out those 13 barrels um, seven days a week mm -hmm. for probably 12 weeks yeah. out of the year. It's, it's a restaurant, and you want to get rid of that stuff. Um, every day. That being the case, if, if we were charging um, 10.50 a barrel, 13 barrels, um, 12 weeks or 16 weeks or whatever, that business would be impacted to the tune of about $15,000 a year. And I think that that's too much <coughs> to hit anybody with, um, you know, on an initial. Um, it, it's just simple, simple math. 13 times you know, 16 weeks times seven days in a week times 10, that's what it comes out. And maybe it's not 15, maybe it's 12, maybe it's 17,000. We're not talking $500 here on a worst case. So so be be aware of, of that. Um, I agree with what Mike was saying, and, and the discussion was in the context of the beach. To Mary, Mary Louise's point, um, you know, we should just – Th this is a complicated thing, and, and, and I, I don't think y you were, you know, showing concerns relative to the complexity or whatever and suggesting that we basically would notice and planning eliminate commercial trash. But f for, the, for, the, for the reasons Mike was mentioning, th th there's too many locations, particularly down on the beach, where just putting a dumpster there is not um, an option. Uh, unfortunately, the history of too many small lots, not a lot free space, buildings occupying major footprints, and, you know, ability of a waste manager, whatever, to get in there to pick up a, a dumpster. It's just not practical. And if, and if you just say, we're not going to do it, and you give them plenty of notice or whatever, we've got excess capacity then in, in, in our public works department. Um, we, we, we would have, um, you know, a significant impact on people that, that wouldn't be needed, at least for the purpose of picking up trash. We would have equipment in terms of, of um, packers and, and so on and so forth. So I don't think that shifting it on to the private sector and 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 letting the people I, I don't think that that's uh, I would be in favor of, of doing nothing rather than you know cutting out um, you know commercial trash. I think in terms of, of um, whether or not this is is too complex, I, I think that we've I think we've got to rely. On, on the perspective that the DPW director is giving us. And, and I think what I'm hearing is, is that this is something that's, that's, that, that's doable. There may be a few bumps operationally starting out or whatever, but he wouldn't be proposing this if, if he didn't, you know, think it was um, doable. Um, so just from my standpoint, I think we either do nothing or we go forward with this proposal but there is no way I would be in favor of, 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 of a level like 1050 a barrel, particularly um, 
starting out or whatever. I, I would only be in favor of a. I, I don't think Ke Keith and I. It's not worth debating in detail, or whatever. But I think Keith and I do agree. There's there's more work to do in terms of figuring out that cost or whatever. My personal feeling is it's not even costing us ten fifty um, a barrel. So I, I guess I would be in favor of either going forward with this proposal, and quite frankly, this has been an issue for umpty um years right. around here, and, and I think the benefit of going forward with it is once, once and for all it would give the voters an opportunity to decide. If the voters say they don't want to do it, then I don't think there's going to be too many people proposing, you know, changing the, the, the status quo in the future. But um, So is it your intent to propose this in the Warren article? That, that would be my, I would not be in favor of the selectmen just unilaterally mm -hmm. making this decision. I think if this were something we were going to, to, to consider, it would be, whether we have to legally or not, I, I think it would be wise to do it in the form of a, a warrant article. And, and at a level substantially less than the, the 1050, at, at least starting out first year or whatever. Mr. Chairman, I agree with that, but I have a couple of follow-up comments. We are continuing to resolve some of the messes that have been made in the past. Letters just went out dated November 5th to two areas of town that are in fact private properties and they have been told that it's necessary for them to see to disposing of their own waste. And, and Mike brought up the issue of private property and driving on private property, which I am absolutely opposed to. Uh, in other areas of town, and we may be finding uh, other properties that are, in fact, private roads and discontinuing <coughs> services on them. I will reiterate, you're talking about 300 properties. I'm talking about town. I'm not talking just about the beach. I'm talking about the whole town. I'm talking about commercial. I'm talking about businesses that are being operated to make a profit. And that's different from private residential properties or public properties like the schools and, and the town buildings. Um, the, there is tremendous volume coming in. I'm sure creative uh, waste management people or whoever is out there will be able to resolve a problem of dumpsters or not. And by the way, they're carts, not barrels, carts. Um, I say that this is a um, fairness issue. It is a fairness issue that's finally coming to a head, and the, the galley hatch doesn't pay any less in taxes because it's disposing of its own waste, and it has probably since the time the restaurant was built. And I'm just using them as an example, but they're, they're an easy example. This is a business decision. Many of these individuals operate businesses in other communities, and I don't think they're getting free waste pickup in those communities, let me tell you. And I think it's time to bite the bullet, certainly put a warrant article in front of the public with options and see where we go. We've got to resolve it. Mr. Chairman? Sure. Is, isn't the very nature of what we do is for our municipal employees to go on private property? When there's a fire, we go on private property. That's when not. there's a police incident, we go on private property. When we operate a sewer department, we go on private property and deduct or take out that waste from that private property. So I, I, I don't follow the logic of not going on private property. When we're not plowing roads and working in the public space, which is the very minimum in this town, uh, we oh, that's the nature of what we do. It is the very nature, it's the very essence of what we do. And I don't support a Warren article. I don't think anyone has a handle on costs. I don't have any uh, of current costs. I don't think they can fix costs. I don't think we should burden the department with these costs. We do not micromanage arrest procedures for the police department. We do not uh, micromanage their SWAT team or CERT team tactics. We don't micromanage the fire department. We don't micromanage the headquarters element here. And I'm just opposed to the whole thing, and I think we're placing an undue burden on a department that never has a down season. Police, to a certain degree, fire to a certain degree do. Public works never rest. They go from summer to high-intensity operations to fall to high-intensity operations to the sewer that is taking private property sewage off of private property. There is no surcharge for that. We're taking all of these responsibilities, and I think we're overburdening the director and I don't think now is the time, I don't think next year is the time, and I don't think it's a priority. And those are my final words. Thank you. Um, Mary Louise, you made a comment about a Warren article. 
and giving the you, public options. You started it, so you gave me the idea. Okay. And anyway, specific to um, giving the public options. Mm -hmm. Okay. If if we did go forward with a Warren article, you can't give options well, on a right. Warren article. Right. You have to make a proposal. Right. So there there we would there would be you know, one option or whatever. Well, um, basically, do you wish to continue to have the town collecting commercial waste? I, I think it would or have to. I, I think it would have to have a little bit more um, right. detail than that. Keith, the question for you. I don't know if you want to bite this one off or not. But but if we deci did decide to go with a Warren article, I would only be in favor of it if we knew what we were going to charge them. I, I wouldn't be in favor of it not knowing whether it was ten fifty or twelve fifty or 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 four dollars or whatever. Based on your experience in, in Exeter and, and, and bag and tag and whatever, what what do you think would be a if we did go forward with a warrant article, would be a reasonable rate to to charge them, um, you know, for example, for that ninety six gallon barrel or whatever. Wait, cart, cart, cart. I think it's a just cart. off the top of my head, what I would suggest is that you would match if we could find out what the galley hatch and these other places are paying for commercial mm -hmm. is to match that. Is to start with that and see what they I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that getting a dumpster would be cheaper than what I'm proposing by the car because mm -hmm. we just can't right. it's more labor intensive. Right. So if you have a spot to put it. Right. Yeah, that's not what you're at. You're at I, in order to come up with a cost for the car if I could find out what the what they're paying for commercial for a dumpster, mm -hmm. then I could take that value and transpose it into what it would be for a car, and it's going to be much less I anticipate than the, the 1050. In the other one that mentioned Exeter, I just want to say that when we did go to the paper bag there, and I was tasked with coming up with the cost uh, 18 years ago. I came, just what I did here, <laughs> I came up with the true cost, met with the board, they said, eh, you know, we're just starting this, and they ended up uh, eating some of that, and they made mm. a decision to go with, I think it was like 50 <laughs> cents less a, a bag or something like that, so that, I'm familiar with that. But, but you're, you're, you need to ask, if we're going to bring this to the public and not decide it here, and I have, I have no problem with that. You've got to have a clean presentation. And if you're asking the public, should we, ch should we from such and such a date, uh, pick up commercial waste at a charge of such and such per card or per pickup or per day or whatever the heck you want to do, that's a different issue. And I propose that we present a clean uh, uh, statement to the public as to their wishes and the bottom line at the at the heart of all of this is does the town of Hampton do the, do the taxpayers of the town of Hampton wish to continue to pay for picking up commercial trash it's that simple so Richard's idea on a warrant article is very good but I think it's it's you know the question you ask influences the answer that you get and if we're going to bite the bullet and get to the heart of the matter, which is the the, the town picking up commercial waste. Uh, then say it and have a have a plain article and put it on the warrant. Um, I'd I'd like to I'd like to attempt to to eliminate one of those options just to, to try and get through this. I don't want to see him going through any more of these. I I, I I am going to make a motion that we not consider the option of um, eliminating commercial trash. Can I have a second for that? I'll motion? second that. Do we need to discuss that any further? All in favor of that motion? <coughs> Three, four. Mary Louise? I'm opposed. Okay. Four, one with Mary Louise. So now we've eliminated that option. So now the juncture that we at are at is, is do we simply maintain the status quo on this or do we continue to put more Effort. Let me finish. Put more effort into defining a warrant article. I don't think we ought to. If 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 we decide the status quo, then then our our work's done at least for this year. If we decide to go forward with a warrant article, I don't think we need to try tonight.
to define exactly what is going to be in it, but simply that we are going to move forward. So right. would somebody like to make a motion either on the status quo or moving forward um, on the sticker program? Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to ask a question or two before we get down get to that point. Can I, to your knowledge, <clears throat> how many towns in New Hampshire of all the towns we have, what percentage roughly would you guess provide commercial trash pickup to the town businesses? All of them, none of them, some. Some do, not many. Not many. One mm -hmm. percent, two okay. percent. So putting that aside, thank you, um, Mr. Talmanger. Um, <clears throat> uh, and one more point I'd like to make before we take this vote is, like I said earlier about this 1050 per barrel, we can set that price any place we want when we're in our discussion. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question. I think there are two points to consider here. First of all, if we if we put this aside and say the heck with it, we're not going to bother with this anymore this year, then you're ducking an issue that is going to have to be resolved. And I want to know if the members of this board are afraid to ask the public the question as to whether or not they want to discontinue the pickup of commercial trash. I, I think are, we, best, are we chickening out? I think that the best way to ask that question would be for you to make a motion. Um, well, making a motion make, is Making a motion to proceed with, with, with the sticker program without trying to spend another three hours here tonight resolving all the detail. If there's not enough votes for that, then it's by default ducking. we're at the it's status quo. It's still ducking the question. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion that we uh, go down option three path and explore that, and if we can't get that to work, then we'll have to drop back to make no changes. Okay. I would, uh, was that a motion? So the motion is to continue down the, down the path of, of defining a warrant article related to implementation of, of option three. Mm -hmm. Is that, does... And would you accept an amendment for that? <laughs> I think we probably motion. need a second before okay. I, I will second, second that. it. Yeah. I, second. I would okay. uh, amend that or, uh, to include, uh, I would uh, expect a report from the uh, Public Works Director one year from tonight. Oh, good grief. <laughs> um, Is this going to be the same as the sidewalk thing that he spent God in heaven only knows how many hours on and it all came to Mr. nothing? We, we have a motion for an sidewalk. amendment. Do we have a second? Nonsense. Okay, no second on the amendment. So we have a motion to continue down the path on option three. We have a second by um, Selectman Bean. Any further discussion? All in favor? I'm opposed. Of going down the path of option three? I am opposed. Okay, so four, one, we will continue down the path. We've got some work to do. Um, I think we're kind of scratching our heads as far as exactly what we're going to do, but we're going to continue <laughs> along down the option Kicking the path. can down the road. Uh, I, don't, I don't see it it's that called way. Okay. Kicking the Mr. Can Chairman, down if the I road. may, for, for Keith's benefit, I think we ought to ask him if we want him to uh, solidify or verify these numbers he's got here. You, are these accurate or are these I, ballpark? I think those, I'm pretty confident with those numbers. Okay. To be that truthful. answers my question then. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. Um, next item, policy related to trash and recycling pickup at new developments. Something you want to say on that one, Keith? Sure. So this is uh, another request of the board for me to do. Uh, I've provided the board with the draft policy to deal with this issue. And basically it is that uh, two provisions, no new resident, this would be something that I would um, encourage you to, if you're in favor of it, is to direct the planning board. Uh, no new residential or commercial development shall receive town solid waste collection service unless the following provisions are complied with. One, the residents and or staff bring trash and recycling carts to the curb on a town road. And two, service shall be limited to a number of carts in accordance with the following formula. Two carts, one trash and one recycling per 10 lineal feet of town road frontage. And the way I came up with that 10 feet is that it, it needs to be three feet in between each cart, mm -hmm. and a cart is about two yeah. feet. So if you take two carts at six feet, mm -hmm. and then three two feet sections on each, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm getting confused. <laughs> the carts are two feet, 
<laughs> so then with three feet in between, it would come out to be the 10 feet. I got so it. Go so essentially, if, if, if a new development does not have the frontage to be able to accommodate that, then the policy direction to the planning board would be they would handle their own trash. No, I think we've already sent a letter, have we not, Fred, to Jamie Stephan as the planner and, and because I asked for clarification on new developments, that it is not to be assumed that the town will pick up the waste? I believe that's correct. That, that if there's a question on the part of the planning board, an assumption is to be directed towards the Board of Selectmen for an answer. The planning board wanted guidance and that has been given to them. Um, and yeah, what, what, so, so, so how do they... I don't think they've got specific guidance like Keith just articulated. I'm fine with leaving it the way she said. You know, residential I mean, is residential. Small, but I just wanted, again, throw uh, an option if, yeah. you, if, if you want something to be able to say mm -hmm. to the planning board some guidelines. Mm -hmm. I think this is a workable guideline that works. I, I have a suggestion of where we go from here. Y you understand his guideline? You're the planning, you're the yes, selectman's rep to the planning board. I understood the letter that was sent to the well. You're the right. selectman's rep to the planning board. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is is to bring up this guideline to them and see what sort of reaction you get. The two no, barrels. They, the planning board isn't looking for for going fishing. The planning board wants specific guidance from the board of selectmen. That's what he But they said. already have it, have they not, Mr. Well? Did we not give them? Do they have any guidance as far as when it should be? I don't think they do. The well, only guidance they have is a condominium projects are not picked up at the town. Anything else? If there's a question beyond a single family residential development. They have to come to the board of selectmen but for do, answers to their questions. Do, do we want to be dealing with that transactionally, or, or give them? Well, actually, it ends up in Keith's we've, ballpark. We've right. told the planning board that no developer is to assume that there will be. They can ask, but no developer is to assume that town services will be provided at that property. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I think the uh, appropriate staff uh, execution on this is to, when we have issues like this, from a department head to go to the uh, bo body the uh, elected body, which would be the planning board, for their chop prior to the discussion. There's ambiguity, there's uncertainty, uh, there's, I think, there's perhaps, and I am not in favor of discussing this any further tonight without a planning board chop in writing disseminated to each of us through you. Thank you. The planning board doesn't want to be responsible for the decision on what the town is going to do, and they asked for direction, and Fred provided guidance, and I have as well and said that there will be no assumption that there will be town waste pickup provided. Okay. As, as, as a next step on this one then what I would like to see is um, for the town manager to distribute to the selectmen that guidance that's already been provided because mm -hmm. I'm if not... We can have a copy Keith of what you had there. Uh, you've already got it. It's part of the... Oh, okay. The very I'll go through. Pile. And we'll pair it together, and I'll check with Fred and see if we can do clarification for the planning board. Okay. So we, we will distribute that guideline that they already have to the select, and then... Yeah. Okay. Um, next item. As I mentioned at the start of the meeting, I'd like to slide forward um, item three under old business, Grist Mill, Mill Pond Dam funding slash... Um, Warren article while the DPW director is here. I think any discussion of that, Keith would need to be here. I don't see any yeah. point in, in asking him to um, hang around. A um, little bit of background information, and I'll kind of repeat what I had mentioned at the tail end of, of our last meeting. Um, at the October 21st meeting, we authorized the DPW director to request an extension from DES for the completion of the Grist Mill Dam project, mm -hmm. along with a um, deferral of a warrant article until 2015. Um, it dawned on me the next day that, that the deferral of construction and, and the timing of a warrant article are actually separate issues, okay? Yes. And, and as I thought about it, I said, geez, it makes all the sense in the world, whether it's to 2015 or 2016, to get as much time as we can get to work with it in terms of being held accountable to complete the construction, because I agree with Keith, the way it stands now, it's probably don't have the capacity to get that done by November 1st of 2014. Um, I believe, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you four or five reasons why, I, I think it would be wiser um, to go ahead with the funding request in 2014 rather than deferring that as well. Um, one, I believe gaining approval in 2015 is going to be tougher than getting approval in 2014. 
Um, I think we've warned people that, that the, 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 the tax bills are going to go up in 2014. They won't feel that until November, December of 2014, and it would be the first, we're going to be looking at the first tax increase in Hampton on an average single-family home since like 2007, okay? So there, there, it's like, you know, people have forgot the taxes can go up or whatever. So I, I, I don't think it would be wise to hit with a, a big ticket item like this immediately following the first tax increase in, in, in six or seven years. And thus, that's my rationale that I think we've got a better shot in 2014. Um, second, if we do try it in 2014 and the Warren article fails in 2014, we've got a second pass and can put more effort into letting people know, geez, we've got this LOD from DOD. If you don't pass this, we're going to hit, be hit with administrative fines and so on and so forth. So by going in 2014, it, 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 it basically gives us two shots if, if he is able to get the, con the extension on the construction to 2015 or 16. One of the things that was, was stated was that grants vary from year to year. So if we have approval in 2014 and the grants, in fact, do vary from year to year, I see a possible scenario where we've got multiple bites over multiple years at the Apple um, for grants because I suspect um, any of those grants, Keith, correct me if I'm wrong, would require some level of matching funds. So having approval on those matching funds in 2014 would put us in a strong position. Um, Keith, one of the things he brought up last time was, was looking for support from the board when he went to DES saying that the board is, is, is supportive of going forward with the Warren article. One of the concerns that you have is we can't commit a future board to 2015. Mm -hmm. We can commit, um, if we choose to, mm -hmm. to a 2014 Warren article. So I think, it, 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 if anything, it makes Keith's job easier with DES and getting an extension if we have a commitment to a 2014 Warren article, and as I thought about it, and I said, okay, I see all these benefits to 2014. Um, I, I'm not seeing any downside uh, or any benefit to deferring the funding to 2015. So I think that that's the first juncture we've gonna we, we've got to hit. Do we wish to go forward with a 2014 Warren article? And then, if if the consensus of that is yes, then we've got to go down the territory of what do we want to do, decommission, replacement, and so on. Are you prepared to accept a motion to place on the 2014 warrant article a motion to ask for funding to decommission the grist mill dam? Sure. We have well, a second. Well, I am so moving. We have a second. I'll second that for conversation. Okay. Discussion. Um, I'd like to throw one issue out there to Keith, and that is, um, what does that translate to in a funding? One of the things that we, um, what we saw, and I did talk to Keith about this earlier today to warn him um, it was coming. One of the things that we saw was, was that there was a, a high number, an average number, a low number, or whatever. So I guess the question is, Keith, if we did, if this motion were to pass, based on the information you've got from Stevens, what would be the amount of money in that Warren article? I, I would recommend that we go with the high figure, the four hundred thousand yes. dollars. Just yep. you know, I, I I think there is a, a fair likelihood of getting some grants mm -hmm. uh, or a grant, uh, but I'd rather at this point in time uh, go with a higher number. Absolutely, I'll include that. Okay, so your dollar amount in the uh, in the motion. So just to clarify, in your motion, your your proposal is the decommissioning option that does not include um, going after the FEMA grant and, and the purchase of the house, correct? Correct. Okay. And, we Keith's re and Keith's recommendation is that we go, that had, I'm sitting here looking at the chart from Stevens, that had a, a low number of 220, an average number of 300,000, and a high number of 400,000, and you're suggesting the 400,000. If that's the option that you're going to go with, yes. I agree with you. Question first, gentlemen. If we decide to go with this Warren article to decommission it and the public says yes, does that mean in the meantime that we can't apply for that FEMA grant for the House? Just in case the public says no, we don't want to decommission it? Well, you have time. The, the, the House, the, the, the grant associated with the House uh -huh. is it, whether or not that's yeah. in there is a function of 
of the option you choose. Could you explain that? Yeah, I, I think that if the decision of this board is to go with decommission, that makes the house grant, the, the grant, the FEMA grant, Irrelevant. because then yeah. there's, there's no, no basis need. for mm -hmm. them to give us the money. We have to prove a case saying yeah. that there's a basis. If you're going to decommission it, then that yeah. there's no reason to remove the house. Well, well, well if you remember back to when Stevens was here, okay, there, there's a second decommissioning option that included the purchase and removal of the house. I asked the question um, of, of, of Stevens. I, I said, that's not making any sense to me. Why, why do we want to go out and spend whatever, 300000 of the federal government's money, 100000 mm -hmm. of our own money to reroute it around a different mm -hmm. you know, route, the water, than it's going today? Mm -hmm. and, and the answer we got was because the historical um, entity that, that they're dealing with in Concord or whatever said it should go that way, and he didn't appear to really understand why they were saying that. I, whatever. I, I, I think you'd take my word for it. We can get by. We don't need to do that. We don't need the house. But the, the point is, though, if the voters say no. No, the voters aren't going to say no because this board is going to explain in logical oh. sequence Excuse to the me. voters what Excuse happened. me, Mary Louise, for a second. If the voters, no. in fact, happen by some wild chance mm. to say no, then how's that? Then we are back to the square one where we may want to move the house. Okay, Mike, the, but here's the thing. Yeah? The, the, if even, <laughs> the, there's two decommissioning options. Okay? Right. Even Tuesday, if, the vo yeah. if the voters say no uh -huh. to the decommissioning Warren article, right. and, and, this, and, and we went forward with the FEMA grant on the house, mm -hmm. we'd have the money to acquire the house, but we'd still have no money to do the decommissioning, right. correct? Yeah, but you won't get the money for a year or so. Well, even for well, money for the house is not going to help. Keep in the mind the other five options to mm -hmm. outside of decommissioning mm -hmm. to reconstruct. Mm -hmm. None of those five require the removal of the house. Mm -hmm. So at yeah. this point, the, house, the, house, I, I think the it, house is irrelevant. You can't take the money for the house and use that to decommission then. Right, right. So, Mr. so Chairman, no may I, um, after the uh, uh, discussion on uh, waste that we just had, and now the five options on this. Um, I have no idea what we're talking about. And I don't think some of the board members know what we're talking about. Not all of us can remember and have the rear view capability of the presentation last week. There's myriad local residents back here with questions and concerns. There's a motion on the floor. I have no idea what a yes vote means to those people back there. I have no idea what a no vote means for that. I don't think most of the people on this board do. I don't know if the public works director does. I don't know if the town attorney does. And I don't know what we're doing. Well, I brought this up last week, and I would have been happy to do it last week. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the clean way to prove to Concord that we are, uh, we are making a commitment to a positive action in regard to this situation so that the request of Keith to delay a little bit on the uh, putting the pieces together is looked at more favorably in Concord, and I believe the engineer explained to us rather specifically the last time that the front configuration of that area would not change. There would not be big things ripping up the whole front of the area, so the street will pretty much look as is when it um, when the construction or, or decommissioning is complete. Uh, this has to go. The state has said it has to go, and 400000 for decommissioning is a hell of a lot less than what state fines would be. So just step up to the belly up to the bar and, and get it out of the way. It's not going to do any good dragging things on. Is, it, is there an opportunity for uh, the folks in, in back, uh, one who's standing, that are taxpayers, to have any say? I think that there's a, a, a couple of options, and I'd, I'd consider that, and it's, it's, it's up to the pleasure of the board. I know that there are people that are concerned with this. I know that there are people out in the audience that would prefer to see the dam repaired or replaced as opposed to decommissioned. I think the question is, is, is do we wish to... To, to take that input tonight at 10 minutes after 9, or do we wish to allow them to have and We can make a decision. That does not prevent them from having input either in the, in, in the context of public comment or setting an appointment mm -hmm. up yep. for a future meeting. I think it would be better if we were going to have that discussion, if we do make a positive decision on, on, on decommissioning tonight, 
to have that discussion in the form of an appointment at a, mm -hmm. at a future meeting at an earlier hour that's um, fine. In, in, in the evening, Bill. So that's my thoughts. What, what is the pleasure of the board on that? If I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, that's one of the things we mentioned that our, when they were here that we'd have some public input into this, and I think we have to stick to that. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I'm just concerned about if we make a choice here, what's that going to do to us if it doesn't go that way at the end of the day? And knowing the voters in Hampton, you don't always necessarily know which way they're going to vote on anything in particular. So I'll just rest my case, and I don't know if we need even, even, even need to vote on it, Mary Louise's motion or not tonight, but I think we definitely have to get some public input. And then we can make a decision. If we're going to put a war article, I think it's smart to put one on for this uh, 2014 to get the ball rolling. I have no problem with that. The only question is what kind of a war article? Meaning which option? Right. Yeah. Well, we have, we have a motion on the table from Mary Louise. We have a second, I believe, was Yeah, that was for, for discussion. Okay. Yeah. Do, do we need any further discussion to take a vote on this motion? I guess not. I would. I would like to have the, the the motion tabled until we have some public input. We had public input at a prior meeting, at the meeting where the engineers were here. Mike, um, yes. It's something that is. The state is directing that a decision be made and that something be done. Mr. Period. Chairman, there's a uh, there's a motion. There's a we, ha we have a motion. We have a second. I, I think we should move to a vote on this. Okay. All in favor? All opposed? Motion passes. Um, Thank you, Keith. Four one would be opposed. And and in fairness to the the people in the audience who are mm -hmm. concerned about this or whatever, Candace, I think you've shown leadership on this. Um, if you would wish to set up an well, appointment. What we'd like to know is what happened to the continuation if, if, of the meeting. If, yeah. if you would okay, like, so how can you make decisions based on all the things in your own report that say this evidence was not brought forth? This information currently, uh, excuse, excuse, excuse me, sir. Needed. If, excuse you me. Never finished the report. Excuse me. I, I'm, yeah. I'm sympathetic to the fact that you have a different point of view and you would have preferred to see a different decision. I would suggest you set up an appointment at our next meeting, if you would like, and we can go down that That's path. That's what was supposed to happen tonight, the continuation? Yeah, yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't say that. It did not take that. place on the 28th. It was here. supposed to take place tonight. Yeah. We haven't finished informing ourselves. We haven't come to a decision. We don't have enough information. This, 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 this board has made a decision, but what I'm telling you is, is, and we need to move forward, what I'm telling you is we are willing to listen to your point of view, and if you would like to set up an appointment and express that point of view that, that is contrary to our decision, then that's fine. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Can we possibly get that poor lady from Child and Family Services? Um, Next. She's not I'll here. Be sitting here until she's not here. Good night, Ben. No. Oh, good. No. Okay. No, I, and I will explain that. One. <laughs> there is no one from Child and Family Services here, correct? No. Thank you, Keith. Okay. Uh, should we? Uh, you doing minutes? Approval of minutes. <coughs> not moving minutes. Okay, back to that. <laughs> okay, minutes of September 30th. Uh, just a minute. I'm a little behind. Uh, I got. Um, Could we? Uh, I got something out of order here, my little pile of goodies. Okay, I'm all set. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Minutes of September 30th. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Page six. Page six, last paragraph, um, third line down, says increase by 60%, should say increase by, increase hours by 60%. Page seven. Page eight. Page eight, second paragraph down, Analysis done by Swotzer including a 1.5% increase, should have said 
percent increase. What, what page was that, Mr. Chairman? Page eight. Page eight. And Second line? paragraph down, right side, about the fifth line down, Mr. Swartzer, including a 1.5 percent increase. And you want to change it to? What was stated was 1.25 percent. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question for the board. On page 9, um, Bill, it's more directed to you, states, Selectman Bean thinks that we need to complete an examination of the list from wars prior to the Revolutionary War and use the names from King Philip's War and other pre-Revolutionary War. Yeah. I thought there was a motion that passed unanimously to do that. Do you remember it I, that I, way? I, I do, and I, 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 without looking at it, my mind says yes. Yeah, yeah. so I would simply ask that the, the minute Sorry, taker go that. back to the video yeah, yeah. and confirm that, but I right. think there was a unanimous motion to yeah. go forward with that. He um, especially wanted to get King Philip's war. In. There was. There was a motion. <laughs> Otherwise known as Medicom, which is his Indian name. So I would make a name. motion to approve the minutes as amended. I have uh, a second. Second that. Seconded by Selectman Pierce. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. <laughs> minutes of October 21st. Page one. Page two, page three, page three, right at the top, it says 4,000 of budget. It should say 4,000 under budget. Uh, yeah. I am. Page four. Ah, the bottom uh, of the page. <laughs> yes, at the bottom of the page. Selectman <laughs> commented that they are looking for a road <laughs> greater. We already have road graders. <laughs> it should be greater. G R A G E R. G -E -R. G -E -R. <laughs> right. That broke me up. Sounds like it. Parmesan cheese, or yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why the roads are all going. We don't want to go there. Uh, top of that yeah. same page, over on the right side, D R A sets a Q C U E. I believe should be a Q Q U E. Right. Page five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be right. Back. Page six. <laughs> Page seven. Page eight. Page nine. Page ten. On page ten, um, Selectman Woolsey motion to approve the Chief's authority to declare a surplus and dispose surplus and dispose of items identified by him from the Old Beach Fire Station, seconded by Selectman Pierce. I'd like to see the list of those items. He provided one. I think we um, saw Included in the minutes. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Because we did see the list. Yeah. Th no, there yes. was yeah. a list. Right. There was a list. So yeah. I'd just like to see that included in the minutes. Yeah. Um, page 11. Stuff. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the October 21st minutes Second. as amended. Second. Seconded I'm by Selectman Woolsey. I'm in favor also. <laughs> All in favor? Mm -hmm. Unanimous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I heard you down the hallway. Town manager's report, Fred. Mr. Chairman, uh, with your permission, sir, I'm going to sort of skip around. I'm going to leave number one off because we're going to talk about uh, insurance okay. a little later. We might as well do it all at once, right? New business. And the new business, yep. that's correct. Yeah. Uh, I wish to call the board's attention uh, that there are a number of seawall projects that have been through the process of approval by the conservation and planning and have yet to file with the Board of Selectmen yeah. for the necessary final permits for the construction for access over town land to perform the construction. We are sending letters to each of those property owners to ensure they understand the process and file for the necessary final permits. There are several others that have already constructed without getting permits from anybody. And we're also sending letters to them. There are three to be exact. And not just the necessary permits, but the insurance uh, e everything. requirement. Um, yes, um, the whole thing. Well, we, we get through the process that those will all come out during the process. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've completed research on two condominium subdivisions. Uh, this came about because we had a request from a person in town with regards to um, <laughs> the status of those two subdivisions. Yeah. Uh, we went and we pulled the plans. Uh, both those plans disclosed that we should yeah. not be uh, doing yeah. snow plowing or trash removal on either one of those subdivisions. Yeah. They're both condominium subdivisions. Very well done, Fred. We are. Uh, we have sent letters out to uh, the boards, the respective boards yeah. in those two mm -hmm. uh, subdivisions, Good. informing them of the problem and giving them some time to, uh, in fact, uh, get get into the system of, of having their own trash and plowing taken care of. And 
<clears throat> until they do that within a reasonable period of time, which we have, I believe was said, stated was 30 mm -hmm. days, Excellent. Uh, we'll be continuing to provide those services. I want to point out to people that uh, both the Winnicott Road Fire Headquarters and the New Beach Fire Station are in service. Dispatch is now located at Winnicott Road. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I believe the chief is planning in the near future, once everything is settled and everything's in the proper places, yeah. he's going to have a, um, an open house and ribbon cutting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the board will be there, for, I, I hope, with a very large pair of scissors to uh, <laughs> open, the, open the red tape and get rid of that. Fred, have the signs been uh, ordered? Because the signage needs to be put up in both stations. They, sign, the signage has been ordered. Okay. Uh, that's part of the final yep. final close up. Yep. Uh, and we've already talked about the, the beach fire station and the, uh, the asbestos, so I'm not going to repeat that. I think right. everybody's probably heard enough of that tonight. Excellent. Uh, the chairman asked me to, uh, to review and to bring in tonight for the board's re uh, information uh, the status on the tax rate setting. Ah. <laughs> I can tell you that as of 1 1 13, because that's the latest information available, which was Friday for the Department of Revenue. There are 134 towns in the queue, and we are one of them. Uh, so far, 62 of those towns have had tax rates set. Oh. 72 have left to, been st to be set. There are 126 towns that haven't even made the queue yet. Uh, we think, based <laughs> upon the way they schedule those 134 and what they've gotten through with the, with the 62, <laughs> that sometime late this week or early next week, they're going to set our tax rate. Uh. Uh, what date was that again? You said early, mm. sometime late this week or early next week. No, I mean, as of what date? Friday, you, last Friday. Fr as of Friday. Friday. This was, uh, oh, I oh. thought I thought you said oh one oh one thirteen. Oh no, 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 that's too far down the road for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'll be a relief. As of last Friday. Okay, thank you. So yeah. we we think uh, just based upon the way they've been regret progressing through this, mm -hmm. they have not contacted us. So why don't you understand the tax rate process? The setting process is not as it used to be. What they do is yeah. they email us yeah. and ask us for the final two pieces of information, yeah. which is the overlay and, and uh, the MS4 review. Which they have. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they'll ask again, just in case anything yeah. changes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, just to make sure, and then they will set the tax rate, Good. the estimated rate, which they'll give to us. And it takes three days for that to be confirmed by DRA, yeah. and then they will announce it. So that's kind of where we are. So we, 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 we look in pretty good shape yeah. and yeah. related to cash flow and trends and all we that. We are. Yep. Uh, and it looks like we'll have tax bills out sometime uh, in the middle towards later the month. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. I hope it's not the 25th. <laughs> we, 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 don't, we yeah. don't need any right. of that. Yeah, because the last, um, last payment day would be Christmas. Well, that we don't want that either. Good. We wouldn't want that. No. Um, I can tell you that. Uh, uh, we are steadily working towards the JOP with Seabrook, and uh, uh, yes, that's very. That's nice. actually on there in the business. Yeah. Yes, it is, yeah. and, and we've been we've been plotting towards the end of that as we as we've gone through this. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the Church Street Station is concerned, I know you ha heard the earlier report this evening. Mm -hmm. They are up. Uh, they're almost finished. Uh, more than half the building with brick face. They're getting ready to uh, put on the uh, the roof. Uh, the trusses and to close it in and uh, they're making fabulous process when I talked to the contractor uh, at a recent meeting uh, he indicated that uh, they expect to be able to uh, have pavement down before the end of the month Wow! so oh, good. that parking lot should be just but, about finished but Fred the actual flow probably won't take place until March that or in that the, the final the final hookup and, and commitment yeah. to full-time service will be sometime in the yeah. beginning of March good. So they're moving quickly and they're yeah. moving very well. Uh, one question, sir. Fred, on item number two. Yes, sir. You said that they, some folks didn't get permits with anybody. Did, how did how did the state miss that? Don't they, they get excited about that? They did get the state permits, but nothing from the town. Oh, they the, got the state. The, the yes. state actually, there was a number that were done at once. Actually, sent the yeah. information to Northampton as opposed to Hampton. That's in the area oh. yeah. where it's the Northampton Hampton uh -huh. line. But on the ones that were like in the area from 1068 Ocean Boulevard up to the start of Northeast Lane, I think like mm -hmm. two Northeast Lane or whatever, yeah. I'm told. Uh, I think I got it from Jay Diener that they went, maybe it was you, that they went to um, Northampton. Well, the, the, the permit was sent to Northampton. The state permit. So right. we would have, had they sent it to Rayanne, then we would have been. Know, in right. the yeah. Loop. Oh, okay. So the Concord, 
these permits are usually issued by the Portsmouth office that takes care of the seacoast. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, they're issued by the, the office in Concord. Uh, For some reason, they don't know the difference between, between okay. Hampton and Northampton. So can we're I just trying to get them in so we can get this all done and taken yeah. care of. And I, no now, everybody in Concord always knows what they're doing. We know that. Oh, gee. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I guess it's official then. That's it, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> okay. Questions for Fred? Um, I have a few. Fred, Sir. Um, I looked at, on the issue, your item number three on the condominium um, development. So I've got a couple of questions on that. Sir. The, the um, ceasing of, of snow plowing and, and trash services or whatever. My first comment is, is we've been doing that for what yeah. looks to me like those developments have been around since like 1998 on one and 2002. Mm -hmm. I suspect we've been doing it all that time. I'd like to give them a little bit more time. I mean, December 6th is, is only um, three weeks away to go out. And I, I don't see that it hurts to give them another 30 days or, or, or something like that. Well, we're not going to be precipitous, let's put it that way. Uh, we know that it has to be done, and we're not going to leave them in the lurch. Right. Uh, but we'd like to know that uh, they're taking some constructive action. I, I, I would, I would um, make a motion that, that we not cease trash pickup on either of these until if they're in if they got it in place before then fine but until um, January 1st how about snow plow I'll get to that okay okay so my motion is 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 that we give them until January 1st as opposed to um, December 6th do, it, do I have a second on that motion I'll second that any further discussion they've already received a letter for yes. this for the that doesn't mean we have to stop well, it on well silly right yeah. Have we been have we been in touch with the uh, board of directors? We've mailed the letter to them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Boards of directors of small condo associations might not look at their mail for a couple. This of weeks. is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right. I mean, we actually you know, pick up the phone. Get someone knocking the door. You know, good old fashioned customer service. Uh, we sent the the information by mail. Because we mm -hmm. need to give a formal written notice. But, but I mean, some of these associations have five and six units. I mean, the, the association president could be down in Florida or whatever. So, at any rate, we've got a motion, we've got a second to defer stopping the trash until January 1st, which gives a little bit more time. I think Phil's idea is a good one. It's not part of the motion, but to contact them by phone. And, 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 uh, and I would just amend that, and, and to make a, a physical stop or by phone, in person communication with the board of that, directors. I'm fine with that amendment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Four. Wolsey? Opposed. Opposed. Four, one carries. Wolsey opposed. Now, the question I have is I saw we had all this um, information and, and site plans or whatever. Yeah. And I clearly saw in both of them, um, yeah. condominium association shall be contact for rubbish removal. I didn't see any information about the snow plowing in there. It's, yeah, it's, in, it's in uh, both the, uh, it's on both the plans and it's also in the condominium documents. Yeah. I don't know if she sent it to you, but it's there. Right. Well, yeah. here, here's the site plan and it's got the trash highlighted. I looked yeah. around the page and I didn't see the snow plowing in there. Mm -hmm. She didn't send you all the information, but I can tell you I've seen it. It's there, uh, and they are supposed to do it their own plan. Okay, now, and, and I'm not disputing it, I'm just saying yeah, I didn't see it, right. But now, again, we've got a situation that we've been doing the snow plowing since 1998 or 2002. We've had a number of associations, I think roughly about 30-ish or so, that we established as um, emergency lanes, okay, and continued to do the snow plowing. Okay, and I'm not necessarily suggesting that we take that route, but all of a sudden we're telling somebody where we've been doing the snow plowing for, um, what, 15 years, 13 years or whatever, that it's November and we're not doing it this year. Well, one of these you turned down for an emergency route. Mm -hmm. And they right. kept on plowing it anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> that's but, but again, that's my point, good Fred, is, is, yeah, that's is right. one, I don't have the information to see that, I believe you, okay? Yeah. So I'm not really contesting that because you said that information exists. I'm, I'm just uncomfortable with the fact that we've been plowing the snow for 13, 14, 15 years. Yes. I mean, have we have we told them in July it, it, it wouldn't be quite so bad? I don't know. What, what's it like, Mike? You know, trying to go out and get a snow plowing contractor to do? Oh, well, they they probably could find somebody yeah. uh, to do both of those. 
I would think. Uh, you. We'll just if, let, let's leave the that alone. But tie that to Phil's communication thing. Let, let's let's go out there and talk to them. Right. And and not just well, we send the letter. We won't leave. He them said he would inaccessible because we can't do that for right. public safety reasons. But we also don't want to leave them with the impression that since it's a requirement that we found in the condominium documents and on their plans, I understand that we just can't. My mm -hmm. no issue is the, is the timing. Right. No, no, I understand. Right. Should it, should have been done two or three it, months right, ago. Would exactly. have been much better. Exactly. But Actually, so. it was done by the board. Yeah, so the board right. turned down right uh, that 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 work, and the, the public works department just went ahead and did anyhow. Just went and did it. Kept on doing it. Okay, I don't think there's any motion or any change necessitated by this one, but um, I would like to see, and hopefully the whole board feels the same way, that we've got some direct communication with these people, like tomorrow or whatever. Definitely. And we'll give them all till January, whatever it is, first. Well, work well. Well, if you get a snow, if you get a snow plowing contract, you've got a snow plowing contract. Right. right. So, right. you know. You, anyway, okay. I got a few others. Um, I think we've seen that we've had a lot of feedback, um, positive feedback, on continuing the road races or whatever. Um, <laughs> at any rate, there there is some communication. I, let me kind of outline the way I think this is going to play out. I've had a discussion with the police chief. The um, organizer of the October 6th road race, which was the half marathon and the marathon, has been um, in contact with the police chief. He also has an event, which I couldn't tell you how many years it's been going on, but he has an event which is, I believe, a February half marathon that's coming up. So what he is doing is working with the police chief, okay, to, to, to essentially um, try and come up with a plan, okay, that positively impacts the inconvenience aspect of this particular race. So I think that the next, our next opportunity to deal with this issue is is when we receive the request associated with this February race and we can see what this is outlining in terms of starting time, road closures and, and the whole bit. So I, I guess my point is I think that's the next step in us addressing this um, issue. So I wanted to make you aware. I, I would just say this about the, the I, th I think the route selection has been poor on that uh, for that last marathon and I am not discounting uh, folks that came up here and spoke. I'm not discounting the business owner that said he couldn't get any business that day. So uh, mm -hmm. I, am, I am not discounting taxpayers. There was a, uh, uh, a coordinated campaign by the producer of that race to have people email us. Oh, yes. there, many of them are taxpayers. Many of them are yep. not. Many of them are in town. Many of them are in not. I like to, I, I think it's run nowadays. It's more like a, a slow crawl. <laughs> but. Uh, um, I would like to um, uh, impart that in the route selection process to the chief, and it's not just we're taking over Hampton. Hampton shut right. down for four hours. We right. go through the summer. We go through Route 1. Absolutely. We have schools. We, we have a lot of challenges, and a lot of people are kind of past that stage in their life, and, and I'm not to discount their comments and them coming in here, and I think we can do a lot better than that, and I don't think we should just get the, the plan the week before yeah. for the consent. I agree, agenda. absolutely. Right. So I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Somebody's I, mean, I, I think the police chief gets yeah. um, based on And one comment I'd like to make is in the emails, it obviously was passed by word of mouth because it said no road races. We didn't say right. no road races. So they got their messages all right. screwed up. Is so it's very clear we have not eliminated right. road races. Right. We just want to narrow the inconvenience like Mr. Bean said. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, question for Fred. Has, has anybody agreed to lead the 375th committee? No. Okay. Not okay. as of yet. Okay. Lead or leave? Lead. 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 In other words, we've got <laughs> there, there, be a well, I, there, there's a requirement in, in the Warren article for a final report. Right. Yeah. There's, there's, I, I have the impression there's t-shirts and hats and so on and so forth somewhere. We, have, we know where they are. Okay. Okay. So that's a good thing. So I, I think I'm not particularly bothered that nobody has volunteered yet, but I mean, at some point, right. you know, there's a little bit of work left to be done. Yes. You know, with so, okay. Um, okay. HB 672, the the bill that Rennie Cushing is yes. is is um, 
sponsoring, co-sponsoring, whatever related to the pollution control exemption. Just to make you aware, um, that is scheduled for an executive session on uh, November 12th, which is next Thursday. Um, that executive session essentially means that it will either be ITL or it will be moved forward in some fashion, perhaps amended or whatever, to the full house. Rennie had sent me an email about five or six days ago, um, you know, suggesting that maybe we should meet with, with the um, chair of that committee, the speaker of the house or whatever, and lay out our case. Um, I said, I'm absolutely fine with doing that. I'd like some notice because if I'm going to do that, I'm going to need to prepare. I'm going to need the assessor's assistance or whatever. I'm strictly, I don't know where that stands. I haven't heard from, from Rennie in four or five days. I sent him an email over the weekend, but I just want to make you aware and, and essentially to have your approval that I may um, go to Concord, um, you know, representing the town of Hampton, representing the board of selectmen. Go get them. Thank um, you. <laughs> whatever. Uh, may or may not I, happen. I think we but, need um, to do a full court press on this. Right. Yeah. So yeah. No it, problem with that. Go ahead and get anyway. it. Second. Um, Fred, I was watching, I don't know if I got this right because I was channel flipping, but I, I was wa watching the budget committee meeting last Tuesday. Phil, obviously you were there. And the subject of non-union employee wage ad adjustments came mm -hmm. up during that meeting, and, yep. and um, I'm going to put words in your mouth just to um, expedite things, and then you can tell me if they're incorrect, but either way we can get them right. But basically what, what you had indicated was that, that you felt like you didn't have the authority to essentially implement the use of that money, which is about $14,000, and is applied as raises to non-union people. I would just say, speaking for myself, I mean, we're in November. If that money is not um, utilized, um, mm -hmm. you know, for raisers in the next seven weeks or whatever, then it will lapse. So I would, uh, I'm very comfortable with, with, with if, if you want to touch base with the selectman, that's fine. I personally don't think it's necessary, but I think that you should move forward in, in terms of, um, implementing those wage adjustments with the amount that's your the direction budget. that's what right. i'll do right. in the past you've always given the direction yeah i haven't assumed we, we have yeah that's true because i think the the bud that budget control is firmly in this board's hands and i don't want to usurp that that's, authority that's fine. and that's why i'm bringing right. that's why i'm bringing it up tonight but I, I i guess what i'm saying i don't know if it requires it. I don't you think have it the, you have the authority in the statute but i'm suggesting that the manager should go ahead mm -hmm. and implement those wage adjustments with the non-union people as he sees fit. Hmm. Yeah. Very good, sir. Reasonable. Thank you. Okay. Um, Where are we on the agenda? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I'm going over some issues that related Somewhere to the town there. manager. Okay, we're now oh, into, sorry. and I'm that sorry. actually completed a mic. We're now, into, we're now into old business. First item, Warren Articles, and you'll see an item, uh, Ruth, Ruth Sachs, Child and Family Services. and, and oh, yeah. um, I, I need to give you some background information so we're operating from a com common reference point. Essentially what we have here is something that we deal with each year three or four times where one of the entities that's on the list of social service mm -hmm. um, yes. agencies that are in the single article that is selected and sponsored, there are roughly about 20, asked for an increase or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this particular one, Child and Family Services, was the first one. What we have done for leave as long as I've been on the board, basically six years, and certainly since we created that one Warren article with the 20 agencies, which was in 2010, mm -hmm. is the position that we've taken when somebody has asked for an increase, what we have basically said is, is that's fine if, if you wish to have an increase, but we do not wish to put an increase into our select and sponsored Warren article. If you want to go ahead and request that as a petitioned Warren article mm -hmm. for the increased amount, and in this particular one, they've requested to go from five to six thousand. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to it, yep. but if you choose to do that, then we would remove that mm -hmm. from our petition Warren article. Mm -hmm. It would be my personal preference that we continue with that policy, and, and people um, decide, as opposed to the selectmen getting into the interaction through appointments with, yeah. which could be three, five, seven, ten, yeah. pick your number, or whatever different agencies. So the question is, is does the board wish to continue with that policy that we've had of sure. if somebody wants an increase, they go forward with a petition yeah. warrant article and we remove them. Then we right. have to do contact them and let them know that they had to put in a petition. Let them know the, the right. way to do the article. The process. Is, is, is there anybody the that has any concerns with that approach? No. 
Okay, one of the things that, that they had suggested here, and it was creative, I hadn't heard nobody suggest this before, but they say, for instance, we may remain in the selectmen's recommended warrant article at the level funded 5,000, submit a petition for the 1,000. Well, if, if, if we take that approach, we could have 5, 10, 15 right. Right. additional warrant articles right. on the ballot. Um, That's not a... Yeah. Right. Okay, <laughs> then, um, Fred, if you could follow up with Christina and ask her to get back well to done. this particular individual and let let her know oh, the deadline that, that we're continuing that article. policy right. and okay. that Christine also knows that should other yeah. agencies come in that we've made a, yeah. a global policy Same decision thing. not yeah. just this yeah. one. Okay. Okay, okay. good. Um, anything else on warrant articles? <laughs> just a real quick one. We really need a night to sit down and review the warrant articles that we have ready and I think we have a pretty good number of them ready. I was looking at the calendar today. God bless you. you. I was looking at the <laughs> calendar today, and uh, November 11th was a possibility. Um, some oh, people like may have one. conflict. Uh, they're all the Fridays through the rest of November, and we really need to do it this month, are open. I know Friday is not a happy day for I most like people Fridays. to try to do that, but I'm open to Fridays. And other than that, um, I hesitated with the daytime meeting because I really think this should be televised so the public can start getting the feel of what the warrant articles will look like. Um, the only other possibility um, uh, was December was uh, November 13th. And Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. And I can't do that because I got two meetings that day. Yeah. And he has oh. two, uh, recycling committee and what's village the di village district. And the oh, yeah. village district. So um, I, I'd like to comment. Uh, Mary Louise had sent me an email on this, so I was aware of this. Um, I've resisted adding meetings, and I think Mary Louise had even suggested several weeks ago, whatever, mm -hmm. a special meeting to do with yep. Warren articles. And <laughs> I really didn't want to see that happen, but what I've observed over the past three or four or five weeks is we are just have yeah. so many things in our plate agendas. that we yeah. it, it keeps getting deferred. Yeah. I don't think that the, anybody's to blame for that or whatever. It's just that we're too busy. And to I'm not sure when we might do it, but, but I personally have reached the conclusion that I think we need to do that, which he's suggesting, and schedule an additional meeting to focus on Warren will, articles. Will a Friday be terrible at 7 p.m.? I know. I <laughs> Yeah, it'll I be know. awful. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I work for a living. <laughs> even if a Friday is terrible, can we try scheduling a Friday? Probably not the Friday after. How about some daytime work? Hmm? How about some daytime work? Well, the daytime is is kind of a problem. Um, well, if we can have it televised, because I really want the public to see the discussion. Maybe we um, can ask Brian. Starting if it, yeah, yeah. So yeah. A daytime. Don't you work during the day? I do. I so play at I night. I want to have some. Oh, you'd rather, you'd rather play than work? <laughs> <laughs> That's why he wasn't in the Navy. So. Brian, the, the, the situation <laughs> where, where we're at at this point is, is we're struggling to identify a day that works with a 7 o'clock time frame, and the issue was posed, what about something that's earlier in, in the day? And, like and one, one to three? Mary Louise's point is she feels, and I agree with her, it really needs to be on channel 22. Is, is, is there a, a possibility of, what are you thinking, like a 3 o'clock time three, frame? Three, that would work. Oh, three. I was thinking <laughs> 1 o'clock. Well, I was I don't like 1 o'clock. You know, oh, geez, Michael. Well, I don't. Gonna do with 3 you? would be great. Three's great. Three? You want to try, try 3? Can you do it on Thursday? I'm off Thursday. So I have uh, visiting nurse on Thursday. I can do it Friday. Friday? 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 I'm Friday open to Friday. Friday. Not next Friday, Friday though. <laughs> not, in other words, it's a four-day work, four work week. Oh, oh that is. So what are you suggesting, this Friday? No, the following week. Oh, oh the 11th is the holidays. What oh, he's the 23rd. Okay. Oh, not 23rd, 23rd. Are we, are we in a Thanksgiving then? No. No. Thanksgiving is the 28th. No, it's, it's the November 11th is as uh, Armistice Day. Yeah. We have to be careful here. It's going to snow. Bad time so, of the year. So, so yeah, I know, but we've got to get it done. Mary Louise, what, what is the date then that's being suggested? The 22nd is a Friday. Yeah. At, at 3 o'clock. Well, Brian, Brian's looking. November. November. First part, 4. Okay, this 22nd? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. How about, where's the 11th? Isn't that? <laughs> How does? What happened to the weekend be after the 11th? Oh. 
holiday. It's four days. Oh, you want to keep it that way? Okay. Why not? Yeah. The, the 22nd is the Friday following the, the week where the 11th is a Monday. Okay. You don't want the, uh, what's what's the, do we have the Friday of that week um, of the 11th? Can we compromise at 2 instead what's of the Friday three? of that week? Do two. Not unless I have to. I don't Friday want to. Week of the 11th. Yeah, well, what's the I Friday that, Mike, what's that? At the point, it's, it's uh, not. The 15th, I, because we can't cover that. It was the last two. Oh, I know. I yeah. Everybody works. Can, can, I, can, I can I suggest that we confirm Friday, November 22nd at 3 o'clock? That works for me. Does that work for you, Brian? Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Good. Okay. Um, moving off of Warren articles, next item is SAU 90 cable equipment purchases. The request um, for, for funding. We have a request um, in a specific amount, and we have invoices. And I'd like to turn over to Mark at this point to kind of, you know, where we're at and whatever. Um, Thirteen thousand three hundred and seventeen dollars. Yeah. And this is all validated with invoices. Yes. Yes, that's the main. Uh, the idea has been floated for quite some time about uh, expending monies out of the cable TV local revolving fund for um, SAU ninety in some form. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we. Uh, you can't. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, the issue, uh, there's a, there, there has been a precedent for doing this in other communities, spending money for equipment that can be used also by the town. Yeah. Because that satisfies, in particular, the public benefit requirement. Right. Uh, one taxing entity to another. Um, we are simultaneously working as we speak on an intergovernmental agreement mm -hmm. proposal that would go beyond that. Um, but that's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, this board had dealt with the school board, SAU 90 uh, representatives of the selectmen, and had said, well, we will be based on precedent of other communities. Um, reimburse you for your cable expenditures so that you can generate programming for our stations. Te technology. Technology, yes. Um, provided that we, the town, would own the equipment, mm -hmm. but you, the uh, SAU 90, would use it mm -hmm. and insure it. Um, it's an interim step, I guess, is the best way to describe that. And, and to clarify further, it has been explained to the school board that while they had allocated the funds for the purchase of the technology in a school warrant article for 2013-2014, and that's where the funds came from, that's where we're reimbursing them, they have uh, been advised that they need to see to it that those funds are, fu are uh, expenditures uh, are budgeted in their annual operating budget, not a warrant article from here forward. Mm. And okay, so, would somebody like to make a motion? Uh, well, m my only question is um, that I got the impression that there was some communication that they may not, they want to keep the equipment. Well, in the, in the intergovernmental agreement that's in draft yeah. form. That'll be after this, after yes. the fact. Yes. Correct. Okay. I will second that. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, would somebody like to make the I, motion? I, oh, I'm sorry. I will move uh, <laughs> based on I have a invoices. Mark has given us a special. Based, oh, yeah. Does, he, does Mark? I hereby move to expend $13,317 from the Hampton Cable TV local revolving fund okay. to reimburse okay. SAU 90 for its purchase <coughs> of cable equipment provided that such equipment shall be considered by all parties to be the property of the town but is on loan to SAU 90, which is to keep said property fully insured at its expense with the town of Hampton named as an additional insured as reflected on a corresponding certificate of insurance and in which coverage shall not be canceled except for 10 days written notice has been received by the town of Hampton. Boy. 
Go ahead. The, the, the period button must have been broken on the, the typewriter. And the comma was working overtime. It should be it, it being recognized that the educational programming produced by SAU 90 using set equipment for showing on the town's cable channels will be of public benefit to the town. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Slutman <laughs> Pierce. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Well, we're okay. making progress. Yep. Okay. okay. Right in the end. We've All got by. through the grist mill <laughs> dam already. Yep. Yeah. And unless there's any other old business, I'd like to shift in a new business. Yep. Mm. And I'll turn it over to Fred, the item municipal health insurance. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, I'm going to sort of take a little deviant change from that. We received a letter today from PLT, Property Liability and Workers' Compensation Trust, mm -hmm. um, giving us rates for next year. I think the thing that bothers me in, in their letter is that one, one sentence that appears separately on the last page that says, if the court does not rule in PLT's favor and upholds the final order, that's for the payment of the 17.1 yep. million, yep. all claims will continue to be serviced until they are discharged with the commitment and quality of service that we have come to expect. We're reading into that quite a bit because it appears that they're going to go insolvent mm -hmm. in their letter. If it, the whole predication of their, of their letter to us is that if they don't have to pay the seven, repay the $17.1 in a bulk, that um, they will continue to provide services and they're giving us a 5% rate cap, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We made an internal decision that we're going to go out to bid because it's just nothing else we can do. We just don't know what the upshot of all this is. Um, I have called another insurer, and should the Supreme Court make a decision in mid-November, uh, when the trial date is the 14th, 14th yeah. uh, we can be covered. Mm -hmm. So we have a backup plan. Uh, we're pretty sure that they're right, that the, the Supreme Court won't make a decision until sometime next year, mm -hmm. perhaps in the early spring, perhaps as late as mid-summer, who knows. Uh, it takes five to six or seven months for them to make a decision, but we're going out to bid uh, Friday, actually tomorrow, uh, for the property liability and for the workers' compensation, because there's nothing else we can do. One of the things that we, has been presented to us for a number of employees, a couple of employees have filed workers' comp claims, and they have been summarily dismissed. So we're, in, we're telling them that your only recourse here is to file an appeal with the State Department of Labor. And we're concerned because if they're just summarily dismissing every single claim, the idea is to provide nothing into escrow. And there's no funds encumbered, so there's no payout required if they go bust. Because uh, so, now the workers' comp law, they're required to put things in escrow as a claim that's accepted. You know, this this whole situation has been a a Ponzi scheme from the beginning has been ignored by some municipalities, including us. Uh, some have been more uh, vigorous advocates. And uh, now it's backed us into a corner and placed us in a position where we're having to go around soliciting bids and quotes, etc., from insurance carriers at this late date in the year. And I am really. Um, I, I'm not happy at all about the way this has transpired. I, this is a very bad position to place this town in. Terrible, terrible supervision on the part of the state of New Hampshire and if, the legislature. If there's nothing else on the, the liability and workers' comp, then we move on to the health. Care. Yes, sir. Uh, and just to make you feel better, we're miles ahead of most of the other towns. Uh, but still, we've been backed into this position. Right. Oh, I it's agree. If I could just say this, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mr. Welch is on top of his game with this. His staff is, and I think it's prudent that uh, he communicate with his uh, department heads, uh, perhaps uh, through the collective bargaining uh, heads, that they are made aware of their special responsibilities in dealing with a mm -hmm. risk pool that uh, may have impending mm -hmm. uh, bankruptcy issues and how to best protect their rights. Yes. And we've already started that, that conversation. Yeah. And I think that should be formalized to protect our employees. Yeah. And again, I commend you. You've got a bid package out. You've requested the data from the PLT. And, I, and, and you're leaning forward. And I don't think there's uh, any reason to stand. 
No, I don't think I'm there's any reason implying, to panic either. I, I know you're not. I'm not implying not. panic, but we're standing here at the 11th hour in the 11th month holding the bag because of these individuals. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, health insurance. Okay, health insurance. Our health insurance yeah. runs out. Uh, that is the contract. It's up for renewal. Huh. Uh, it runs out technically on December 31st. Mm -hmm. Now, Mike and I have spent considerable time. We have a proposal for renewal from the health trust uh, with a fairly low percentage rate. Uh, we're going to recommend that you do two things. We're going to recommend that you accept the rate. And the reason we're going to recommend you accept the rate is because we don't want to throw the $132,000 in revenue away that's coming on March 1, which is do this town for overcharges and in health insurance. This, this Assuming the they two. don't go under. This, this is the two. Well, well, they're not in danger going under. They got more money than God. Right. Right. <laughs> this, this is the 2012 <laughs> return. Re return. That's right. correct. Exactly. And when you say we have the low right. rates, you're referring to the 4.3 percent. I am, and the average is over 9 percent for most most right. insurers. Right. Uh, but I will remind the board. That we are always at liberty to go out to bid and to cancel insurance. So I want to revisit this on April 1st. Good. Because I think we need to find out what's going on with PLT, yep. workers' compensation, yep. although that's Absolutely. not part of the health trust. Okay. Well, um, the health trust has been funding it. Yeah, they funded it. Right. You so, bet. So what, what is the timing that you're suggesting that we go out to bid on the health piece, Frank? Well, I'm suggesting that we go out to, the health be, out to bid on the health piece after the beginning of April. If they want to switch us to a fiscal year, uh -huh. okay? And I don't really want to go to a fiscal year because it doesn't coincide it with our budget. It complicates things yeah. budget-wise. It just right. drives you I mean, crazy. It, yeah. You don't, I mean, I mean you've got a $2.7 million number, a state and you don't know year. what it's going to be for a half of the year. Yes. Okay. And I, I and I really don't want to take one hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars away from the taxpayers plus okay. another th another seven thousand in dental, uh, plus our uh, our retirees have a large chunk of change in here mm. of over thirty-three thousand dollars that's that's due back to them from this trust yeah. uh, that I think we need to recoup. Oh, absolutely. And then we can we can worry about getting new insurance yeah. later in the year. I have no problem with what you said, Fred. I appreciate all the information there, but. What makes us think that the health trust has all this money and they're not going to drag the other, they're not going to get all drugged down in this big cesspool? They've been split up, remember? They've been split I know, up. But le totally legally separate? Yes, yes, they are completely, mm -hmm. totally separate. And the court recognized that. Yes. Okay. And, and, okay. and the money is owed to the health trust, the 17.1 yeah. million. So, should, and I don't know if it's going to happen, but should it happen, that the other, the other trust, the other separate trust, mm -hmm. should go into some form of bankruptcy, whether it's 11 or 13 mm -hmm. or whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. Their assets will be disposed of, and the money will come to this trust. Mm -hmm. Including yeah. that building that they And this trust has money to burn. So to this, this trust has got a lot of money. Okay. So they're, they're good they, they own the steps. building in Concord, too, that my lady just wants yes. to know about? Uh, yes. Well, you know, I don't know how that's been divided up. <laughs> For sale. It could be. Who knows? Does anybody have any concerns related to Fred's approach? I appreciate Fred. Oh, I appreciate your work on this, Fred. Well, well, just, to, just so you know, under the hearing officer decision, if the $17.1 million were paid back from the property trust to the health trust, yeah. health trust is supposed to distribute that to its members. Right. right. There would right. be a huge refund to us as well. Yeah. Right. Okay. What item. a tough time getting here. Next item on the agenda. Um, the signing of a release deed right away um, with the uh, harbor at Witten and Dustin Condominium Association 5 to 7 Dustin Ave. Mark, did you want to say something on yeah, that? Yeah, th this is the second of three um, instances where we would be carrying out your vote that you took back in May mm -hmm. under RSA 4114A yep. to release the old right of way uh, in, uh, from that uh, led to nowhere. Uh, in uh, running over three different properties yeah. uh, in return for a release of all liability from the uh, entity getting the release deed. Uh, and so I have Attorney Peter Sari's office uh, also, in addition to representing the Ocean Walk property, mm -hmm. represents this adjacent condominium association. So they've provided me with a copy of the signed release 
and also of a satisfactory release deed for your signatures. Okay. Would you, and would you ask Attorney Sari, such a nice gentleman, please get our names right. <laughs> he's driving yeah. me nuts. Did he spell um, your name wrong? No, but he's he's yeah. he's switching. He's Trace fiddling the order around. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Did, did did you need a motion on this, Mark? Uh, uh, it's it's okay sign. to just uh, motion is just to sign the release deed. I'll so move. I'll second. Second. Seconded by Mike Pluff. All in favor? Unanimous. I take okay. care of that. Um, uh, next item: I'll amendment to the stop sign ordinance regarding um, Norton Road. To actually, two stop signs. Um, I believe these are stop signs that are already there. It's just a matter of matching up the ordinance. Correct. And um, I will so move. Norton Sorry. Road southwesterly before enter entering Mace Road and Scott Road southeasterly before entering Lafayette Road. Yep. Moved by Mary Louise. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Seconded I'll by Selectman Pierce. Yeah. Any further discussion? Yeah, I just, are, are the signs already there, you said? I believe they are, yes. Yeah. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Um, next item, Hampton Beach Village District, dis distribution of money regarding parking lot loss revenue. Mark, did you want to say something on that? Uh, yes, under the uh, memorandum of understanding that was signed uh, some time ago, there was the provision that uh, the town would reimburse the Hampton Beach Village District for the net revenue loss during the period of time that we were constructing the Beach Fire substation. Uh, by net revenue, we mean, of course, the uh, revenue minus the cost that they've saved by not having to run the operation. Good. And so the MOU, our Memorandum of Understanding, said that this was to be computed on a three-year basis, the average of the net revenues minus uh, the average of the uh, uh, expenses usually associated. And so um, since the season has passed and we know what they've made this year, which is nothing uh, on that property, um, uh, Chief Silver asked the treasurer of the uh, Hampton Beach Village District to make up a computation uh, with uh, accounting for the, for the past three years of the net revenue and the net uh, expenses. And... Um, we have uh, gotten the computation of the figure. Mike has checked it. I've checked it. Sixty-six thousand six hundred forty-six dollars and fifty-two cents. Also, move that we allow the distribution. Actually, it's already been approved by the voters. I, we don't even need a motion on this. Well, one. it's uh, if you have if, to cut the check. If you, he'll have to okay. cut the check, okay. so okay. it's so all the right. The motion is, is all right. To what, Mary Louise? Compensate the Hampton Beach Village District for their calculation of lost parking lot revenues in twenty. Thirteen due to construction of and the amount is fire station sixty six thousand six hundred and forty six dollars and fifty two cents and I'll second the motion. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Award of bid for the two thousand thirteen town report. Fred, did you want to say something on that one? Yes, Mr. Chairman. We had solicited from fourteen printers. Wow. We received back two. <laughs> <laughs> The printer who has done our, our report for the last several years was the Country Press, bid four thousand eight hundred and twelve, uh, ten dollars and ninety-two cents. Uh, the next, the other bidder was Keystone Press at seven thousand three hundred and sixty-seven dollars. So, uh, one's under the five thousand dollar limit, which doesn't require quotations. But we felt, in the spirit of the ordinance, we need to bring it to the board because mm -hmm. we only had two proposals. Yeah. And we'd suggest to you that the country press as the low proposer be awarded the sum of money. And they've done it before, Fred? Right. Yeah. They've done it for the last several years. Yeah. Yeah. Also move that we award the bid for the annual town report 2013 to the uh, country press. Second. I'll second it. I beat you. It's good. All in favor? <laughs> it was Four, zero. Here. I abstain. Um, Why? I don't think we need to, with a policy of a fifteen thousand dollar limit. I, I don't have a problem with it, but yeah, I don't no, think we need no, to. Whatever. I don't I think I, we need I, to be I, approved in five thousand dollars. That's time. all. I appreciate the fact you brought it to our attention. Right. Thank yeah. you. Okay. okay. Yeah, I don't have a problem with this, Brett. Forward. Joint I, operation I, plan. Super can. Okay. Yeah. Brett, did you want to speak to that one, uh, Mr. Chairman? As you, and I think as the board knows, we currently use the state of New Hampshire for um, the beach raking at the. Um, Sun Valley. Sun Valley Beach 
and that's not been very successful. Um, using their contractor, in a lot of cases, he has to spend so much time raking the state beach that he doesn't get to rake the Sun Valley beach. So uh, whether we'd like to do it at least once a week, uh, and we would like to ask Seabrook to do that. But we mm -hmm. need some sort of an agreement so both Seabrook's protected and Hampton's protected. And we've given you that agreement. Uh, it's been through council and reviewed. Yeah. Uh, we think it's a fair agreement. We just have to reach some sort of financial distribution understanding with the other community mm -hmm. in order to get that done. And we'd like to, with your blessings, proceed to do that. Yeah. And of course, bring the dollar value back so yeah. you can approve it. I think it's an excellent idea. I, I think we should proceed on this. Um, I, 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 I don't think that we should start off by throwing out the amount that we're it's not in the news. right, right. Uh, the current right. vendor it um, but but if you look at what goes on over there I suspect that the state contractor spends more time deploying than he does raking yes. it, 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 yeah. it, it's a very very small section of the beach yeah. um, Seabrook does it the residents I talked to to Hampton Sun Valley residents I talked to Seabrook mm -hmm. residents right in that area of Woodstock yeah. and um, Ocean Drive, whatever they're—they're they're all really happy mm -hmm. um, with with what Seabrook is doing, and, and for move. Seabrook, they're already deployed. They're there. Right? So they're there. Um, the other thing that Excellent. you know that they would be doing that, that the state isn't doing is they, Seabrook would also be getting rid of, of the material. Yes. So I, I can't—I'm sure we'll be able to work something out with I'm them sure if they have any interest. Yeah. 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 Essentially, um, the, the format of this, Mr. Chairman, is that this is essentially the selection of a vendor. It happens to be a governmental entity, but uh, you would also, we would want ultimately to have you waive the bidding policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, I mean, it's, it's, it's not that it's very tonight? small, and there were times last year, um, I, I go down there a lot with the dog, where Seabrook looked beautiful, and then you hit the oh, Hampton yeah. line, and it was yeah. totally loaded Terrible. with with, yeah. with seaweed. Do you want a motion on that tonight? No, I think we're, he's going to look into it. We, we um, need to talk to them and yeah. what the cost is, and we need to get that. Finalize then we can make a motion. Okay. okay. Right. Any other new business? Nope. Um, consent agenda. Um, I'd make a motion to um, approve the consent agenda. Could I have a second? Second. Item one, Conservation Commission alternate appointment, Patricia Swank. Number two, street closure permit, Hampton Christmas Parade, December 7th, 2013. And number three, a parade and public gathering license for the Hampton Christmas Parade. All in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Any uh, closing comments? Somebody would like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Made by Sletton Pierce. Second. Seconded by Sletton Pluff. All in favor? At 9.47 p.m. Unanimous. Well, okay. it doesn't yeah. hurt. I need to see.